college football world is talking about Coastal Carolina. What's this program secret sauce? Yeah, the secret sauce here is, uh, you know, all about the culture and the leadership that the coaches and the, the older guys have built, you know, as they've been here. We play a really tough schedule in the Sun Belt, so, you know, you got to do things that are going to separate you from other teams. Everyone has good players, so we understand that, uh, you know, it's a business. We want to win every week, but at the same time, we really emphasize having fun. You know, we're playing football, we're playing the game we love, we want to have fun. And, uh, you know, just around the, the community and the school, you know, we, we're seeing it spread out. You know, we got little kids running around with mullets everywhere. <laughs> You know, you're seeing you're seeing the shots up everywhere. So yeah, we're just really, you know, we, we it's the culture and the leadership here that are, that starts with the coaches. Why is this program a perfect match for you? Uh, th this program is perfect for me because uh, first of all, it's in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I love this place. You know, I grew up coming here as a kid and stuff like that. And uh, the offense is perfect for me. Um, in high school, I ran triple option. I uh, got to throw it around a little bit. So uh, actually, my coaches came up here in high school, checked the place out, saw the offense stuff, and they're like, dude, you got to go check this place out. Like, this is a perfect spot for you. And you know, this is way before I ever talked to coaches and stuff like that. So I uh, came down here, you know, got to check out the office, the coaches, the spot, loved it here, and uh, come to find out this is the perfect spot for me. It's worked out for you. Yes, sir. That's the young man that steers the boat for Coastal Carolina as we welcome you to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Ram Trucks. You saw the mullet. You heard about the fun they have down here, and a Power 5 team is in town with the Kansas Jayhawks against the Shauna Clears of Coastal Carolina in their undefeated regular season last year. Thanks for joining us, Jason Benetti, Andre Ware. You saw Kark already. Grayson McCall's got the mullet. He's got a <laughs> smile. He can throw it, too. Yeah, and he's a pretty good football player to go with that, but they're known for their option attack, and teams try to zone in on that, but guess what? You're right. He can throw the football. He's got tremendous touch over the top and leading receivers, knowing exactly where to go in this spread option attack and hurting defenses down the field when you ask him to drive one down the field he's got arm strength and can do that too and just when you think you've taken that away from him don't forget that he can pull it down and make plays with his legs he's as tough as they come in this business at that position and he's going to be playing in front of a wild crowd tonight here at Brooks Stadium in the shadow of Myrtle Beach Hey, look, the team coming in here just won for the first time since 2019 last week. It was a 97-yard drive. I mean, they had to go all the way downfield to win that ball game against South Dakota. Yeah, they can spread you out and hurt you with their passing game. They get after you defensively as well. It's a team that is kind of, you know, starting to put some pieces together where they're finding their identity and their culture. Lance Leipold is the reason for that. Yeah, he really is. He's a winner everywhere he's gone. Just give him time at Kansas. He was at Buffalo. He won six national titles at Wisconsin Whitewater, and he tries to get him 1% better every day. Can they knock off the upstart, the fun team from last year, Coastal Carolina? It's going to be a blast tonight. Join us. Coastal Carolina and Kansas from Conway and Brooks Stadium on the surf turf. And just to prove to you that he doesn't spend 24-7 on deck chairs, here's Kark. Well, Jason, Kansas has had some lean years in football, but in April they hired a complete winner in Lance Leipold. And when you win, people will follow you. Lance Leipold has four coaches on his staff from Wisconsin Whitewater days where he won six Division III national championships in eight years. He turned Buffalo around in six seasons and six players transferred to Kansas to play for him, including star center Mike Nowitzki, wide receiver Trevor Wilson, and defensive lineman Eddie Wilson. Kansas now has a detailed-oriented player and program changer in Leipold but he has serious rebuilding to do. Really interesting, a big 12 team on the road against a group of five trying to pull off the upset and away we go with Kansas and Logan returning. Kenny Logan Jr. for the Kansas Jayhawks and he's got a nice return up to the 35 yard line on this teal turf. 
and Jason Bean leads out the offense and here's a young man who went into the huddle on that final drive where they went downfield against South Dakota and he said we got to do this for the team for the university and the town they needed to win that badly last yeah, week really showed some poise last week in that drive that you just described 65 percent on the game last week and he tossed a couple of touchdown passes to go along with it so really cool customer in this offense he's a transfer from north texas in denton the mean green and they will run it on first down for not a whole lot with belton gardner who only had 21 yards on 19 carries but he did have a big run in his career against coastal carolina of 61 yards yeah, he led the team or team high last year in rushing with 325 yards. They're going to try to feed or really focus on the running game, especially here early against this coastal defense and see if they can move the ball on the ground. But when they spread you out, they're going to hurt you in the passing game as well. They will run it again. And this is a super senior laden defense. Enoch Baconzo was there for that tackle. Yeah, and he is just a playmaker all over the field. Five tackles last last week. Had seven last year in the matchup against Kansas, but you're going to call that name a lot in this ballgame. How about that for a football name? Enoch. Love it. Enoch McConzo out of Quebec trying to build a Canadian pipeline to Coastal Carolina. This defense is hungry, and they are very talented. Bean to throw on third down for Kansas, and he's got the first down across midfield. It's a gain of 19 to Kwame Lassiter, the second, probably their best wide receiver in terms of experience. Yeah, just two deep in zone drops, which allowed Lassiter a, an opportunity to find a soft spot just past, you know, the, the down and distance marker. But I'll tell you what, the composure of Jason Bean, third and long, which is where they want to stay out of, just, just a nice job of keeping his composure and going through his progression. Devin Neal out of Lawrence, Kansas himself. The flag is down. It's going to be a loss in the first place. And then you're going to get a holding penalty to go along with it by Mason Fairchild, the tight end. He's going to back this Kansas offense up. All the way to the ring time. Take our penalty. Take our first down. You know, sometimes you say the crowd is echoing through the stadium. The official there was echoing through the stadium. It's a Big 12 crew tonight. Yeah, and you'll, you'll see 89 just kind of trying to throw a block on the outside and gets just a handful of jersey and the officials right there to see it. But this is where Kansas, on the road against a good opponent, going to have to stay out of these types of situations. Third and long, first and forever behind the down and distance marker. They had a penalty like that on the game-winning drive last week, and they overcame it. Bean to throw, scanning, scrambling. Jason Bean, the transfer, finds a seam. He's across the 35. Ball is loose. It's on the deck, and let's see who comes up with it. And guess who? Enoch McConzo jars the ball loose. I'm not sure who recovered. It is Kansas and Mason Fairchild, the tight end. Boy, number 43 comes up, and I mean an absolute hand right on the football. I like Charles Tillman, who is just known for that when he if he's causing fumbles throughout his NFL career. Got a little peanut in him. Yeah, a little peanut in him. Gardner back in as a tailback. And for Lance Leipold, a positive drive here on their opening touch. This is Gardner shimmying through, and you talk about what Leipold has done. Buffalo wasn't a place that they won a whole lot. They had dropped football for a while. Wisconsin right. Whitewater, small place, six national titles in eight years with him there. Yeah, he's just a winner, and he knows how to build a culture, and it's going to take a little while. And that's the Kansas fans just have to be patient. But this is exactly what Kansas did last year, a down and then turn the football over, which allowed what led to three turnovers in the first half of last year's matchup with Coastal. Good screen from Bean to the outside. Lassiter's had a nice opening drive. That one's McBride. 
And it will be third down coming up. Been impressed early with the speed of Kansas's offense. We know that this coastal defense can fly around. We have to match that sometimes and play fast, especially on the road for opening drive. And I've been impressed with Jason Bean moving the ball around. The, you know, their play call, calling the, the correct place to get him some easy throws and the receivers finding creases to get themselves open. Third down and three. Gardner gets swarmed down. Bean as well. Both of them got doused, and it was Teddy Gallagher who blew it up. Both the back and the quarterback got drilled. Didn't matter who had the ball. Really didn't know if he was going to be available tonight. Lower leg injury for Teddy Gallagher coming in, but you know, you're not going to keep him out of a game like this and then stop him from making plays. So he stops the back and then gets the quarterback. Uh, in the same sequence. He sideswiped both of them. Yeah. That was a buy one, get one for Teddy Gallagher and his bleach blonde mullet. Jacob Borcello from 46 yards away on Kansas's opening drive, and Borcello is good. A positive start for Kansas. 3-0 the Jayhawks. Lance Leipold is fired up with a road score on the opening drive. So what came college football this weekend a great slate old southwest conference stuff going on seven eastern on espn andre got texas, yeah, texas and arkansas. arkansas i like it that used to be one of the better rival games across the country yeah that could that could be a pretty angry fayetteville and a pretty lively neighborhood and iowa iowa state i've done the cyhawk game before yeah it's filled every year <laughs> and everybody talks about it for months you Good lose stuff. that game, you're going to hear about it. Yeah. And Matt Campbell does not have a great record against the Hawkeyes, though he's done awesome work. They looked strong last week. Didn't they? No doubt about it. Oof. Kansas scores on the opening drive, overcoming a holding penalty and a fumble. And now Grayson McCall, the redshirt sophomore quarterback from south of Charlotte, will join up with his offense. And here's a young man who Jamie Chadwell, the head coach, said, I know he wants to be great. I push his buttons sometimes, yeah. try to motivate him because he is one of the top quarterbacks that you might not have heard of in the FBS. Yeah, red shirt freshman a year ago and went through every, and went through a season for the first time. It was just really flawless in, in his approach to, to how he prepared for each and every game. 11-0 uh, till the bowl game last year in Liberty. I uh, was able to knock him off, but this is a, a magnificent offense to watch. A lot of different formations in motion. It's basically option out of the shotgun, and they will get a quick hitter out of the backfield. Isaiah Likely, essentially. I mean, he was split out wide, but that is just a flat pass for Likely, who will line up everywhere. Tight end, wide receiver, a dangerous man. Yeah, he really is a versatile player. But one of the things about this offense, Jace, is that you – you think you have a beat on it and you with with McCall especially you have guys that either can run the option or can throw the football and very few can do both he's one that can do both here comes the option again McCall on the pitch and this isn't going to go much of anywhere it is Bennett the redshirt freshman tailback from Greenville and it's third down yeah Kenny Logan jr. with a nice open field tackle and this is what you're gonna have to have if you're Kansas all night long filling the alleys and open field tackles like Kenny McCall Kenny Logan made there one of their better tacklers and, and athletes and playmakers on the back end or on this defense period cornerback in high school so he's got some some pretty good cover skills he is really bonded with the new head coach Leipold and they will run it on a third down and two and a whirling white has a first down for Coastal Carolina Reese White who had a couple of scores last week gets seven yeah he got off to a great start last week he's kind of a do-it-all type player that shares time with Shamari Jones he's the speed element to this offense at that position. Jones more the thumper and more the downhill runner, but Reese White, he can bring it. A couple of touchdown runs in last week's game as well. That is likely such a dangerous weapon in motion, and now they will pitch it. And this is Bennett with a crease. Bennett down the sideline, and he's just short of the 30. It's a 27-yard slice. 
usually an excellent receiving threat. They love his home run speed. He was first in the conference, or the conference champion, in the 100-meter high hurdle. So you know that he has got speed to burn. If he doesn't trip up, I don't know that they catch him. I'm not sure Ricky Thomas makes that tackle on the back end if Brandon Bennett doesn't stumble. His dad, by the way, Brandon, played for the Bengals, played for the Panthers, played at South Carolina down the road a piece in Columbia. They'll send tailbacks from everywhere, and now McCall over the top on a slant. Hiley! Jay Vaughn Hiley from 33 yards out. It's what we warned you about. You get so occupied with the eye candy of the option coming at you so many different ways, and this kid. Grayson McCall can put it on the money. He hits highly right in stride and gives Coastal an early lead. Javon Hiley was their leading receiver last year. He's one of the top receivers in Florida history in the state out of Venice. Man, they put a lot of stuff on tape, don't they? Hey, they do. And I mean, speed to burn, accuracy from Grayson McCall, and highly finishing this thing off gives Coastal a 7 3 lead over Kansas. Third year in a row, and in part by Pizza Hut. Order today at pizzahut.com. All right, this is not our crew having some fun on Thursday. This is a class at Coastal Carolina called the Biology of Sharks. What are the odds that you would take that if you enroll, Andre? <laughs> Biology of Sharks, well, I'm not a big fan of sharks, so it's highly unlikely that I would take that that, that class. No, highly caught the touchdown, likely it, caught a pass on the last drive. Unlikely that I would take it for uh, sure. I see. <laughs> Looks like fun, honestly, as we'll get another return from Logan in Kansas. And Kenny Logan gets it to the 34-yard line, and that's where Bean and the Jayhawks will start. Hey, week one NFL Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. Countdown crews on ESPN and the app. Patrick Mahomes with Alex Smith, now part of our team. Aaron Rodgers, maybe his last dance in Green Bay, and then injury updates, breaking stories right up to kickoff. Your biggest headline week one NFL, Andre? Oh, what are you boy. watching? Well, I'll, I'll definitely be paying attention to the the Houston Texans and Jacksonville Jaguars is one of them trying to get off to a pretty good start. Urban Meyer's first game as head coach. Kind of want to see what Trevor Lawrence is, is all about on the next level. But that's one I'll have eyes on for sure on Sunday. Nice drive to start the game for Kansas. Unable to cash it in, but still put him on the scoreboard first. Devin Neal, the tailback. He's a freshman from Lawrence. He's a hometown product, and that's part of what Lance Leipold wants to do is bring guys in here who want to build a program, and he can be confident in his one pitch of you can sit at a restaurant in 20 years and say, I was part of what got Kansas back on the map. That's what he tells recruits. Second down for Bean on the rollout, and that is incomplete. Third down, Kark. Yeah, he wants to build a program, but one of the first things he needs to do is change the bodies of his players. And since April, they have done that. He brought Matt Gildersleeve with him, who was from Buffalo, the strength and conditioning coordinator. They lost 244 pounds of fat mass, but also gained 372 pounds of muscle mass. That's 3.4 pounds per player. Guys, verticals are better. They're faster. They are changing the bodies for the Kansas football players. They're building explosive players with that vertical change. Third down for Bean. Right into the waiting arms of the Coastal Carolina defense and picked off by DeJordan Strong. It looked like it was intended for him for a team that was number one in the nation last year in turnover margin. Pressured by Jeffrey Gunter off the edge, but it was like Lassiter ran 
an out route, and Bean thought he was going to run a curl. He thought he was coming inside, and that gave Strong the ability to play some zone coverage, bounce out, keep his eyes on the quarterback, and then react to the football. It's a nice job of playing corner in zone coverage where you can spot and know exactly where the receiver is and then keep your eyes located on the quarterback. There's an official standing next to a flag on the near sideline. It's at the 27 yard line. He was basically standing on top of it. The crowd is booing and we'll see what the marker is. Been a celebration penalty maybe. Yeah, Coastal's defense is staying on the sideline, so you'd imagine it's after the change of possession. Well, they're, they're celebrating. Defense is celebrating. The offense is ready to, ready to go to work. And this is where the sudden change, you get a big interception inside, you know, across midfield, take a shot. Let's go up top. We saw Kevin Hassel, really the referee. On the previous play, it's under further review. Okay, they're reviewing the interception. Matt Austin, I want to ask you, when he pulls the book out, what, what is that, what he pulled out of his pocket, the referee? Uh, it's probably his uh, penalty card. They write down information there. If, uh, if they have a foul, they write that down, uh, anything like that. Uh, on this review, I don't think he caught this ball. I think as he was fumbling it down between his legs, I think the tip of the ball hit the ground. Uh, I think re replay is going to come back and say this is incomplete. As an official, oh, I agree with you there, Matt. You can see it just kind of touch the ground. It goes through his hands to the ground, and then he kind of cradles right it there. with his midsection. That, yes. that ball squarely on the ground. I think you're absolutely right, Matt. It's, it's going to be uh, Kansas' football here. Matt, as you're evaluating that, could you make any argument that he had possession already? Because the ball can hit the ground right if you do have possession. Well, yes, but he has to survive the ground, so he better have it clearly between his hands uh, and, and cr cradled in there pretty well. I think this ball was still bouncing around, and he was still trying to gain control of it. Thank you, Matt. Always appreciate having you from your home. A great member of our Friday night college football crew. That was third down and nine, so if it is overturned, it's going to be punt time for the Kansas Jayhawks, you would imagine. Big 12 officiating crew. I think they would gladly take the punt here, punt it away, than to give the football away at this point in the game on this on this portion of the field. After reviewing the play, the pass was incomplete. Therefore, it is no interception. However, after the play, there was unsportsmanlike conduct on the bench, the entire bench for Coastal Carolina. That will be the team's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. That carries a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. It'll be Kansas, first and 10. Real quick, Matt Austin, that was after a change of possession when the flag went down. Is that the proper assessment here? Well, yes, it's a dead ball foul. So no matter what, no matter where the ball is going to be placed after review, you're going to have a 15-yard penalty marked off from there. And being unsportsmanlike, it does carry an automatic first down. The interesting thing is he called it on the entire bench. You usually don't see that unless you have a bench clearing ball where you want to have a counter on everybody. So it'll be interesting to see if, uh, if there's another unsportsmanlike on Coastal Carolina, how they treat it. Yeah, I think it was more of a celebration type penalty with the interception by Strong and then everybody getting excited and maybe, you know, racing to the field to congratulate him. And maybe, I don't know if there had been a warning already that we didn't know about, but as Matt said, the entire bench was uh, was called in that foul. That's an interesting foul where you end up having a different result in terms of possession based on a replay review. So after the kneel run, it's second and six. And this is Lassiter on the jet sweep, and he is hog tied at the 49-yard line. Coastal Carolina overwhelms Lassiter. Well, they had 10 guys in the box, so it was going to be tough for Lassiter to get himself outside. I mean, they loaded up as if they knew exactly what play was coming, not giving up leverage, and dropped him for a loss. But you know, that's that's kind of knowing the tendencies of, of a team and a new coaching staff at that, when you're going to run certain plays so that you have the right defense dialed up. 
Dean led him on 64 yard drive to win last week. He's at the 48 here and he's giving ground. Bean under pressure. He throws it downfield and he's got a completion inside the 25 yard line and down to the 12. Luke Grimm with a first down grab for Kansas inside the 15. And he didn't have a catch in last week's game, Luke, Luke Grimm, but they describe him as super tough and not afraid to get physical. He'll block on the outside, do the dirty work in this offense, and sometimes you get rewarded as he did there. But Jason Bean, we talked about this during the week. This guy is a competitor. He's got a great, he's got great arm strength, and he does just enough to make Kansas competitive. He's a very quiet guy, but he has become a leader for this team very quickly. And now Bean running behind Neal. It'll be second down and about four. There is a first down available for Kansas inside the five. Yeah, this is this is exactly how you want to start the game. They came in the, the, the first drive, drove it down, put points on the board. Haven't turned it over yet. They've had a couple of scares with a Bean fumble and then a, a, an interception that was ruled a drop. But they are right back again in their second drive, knocking on the door for points. Back shoulder throw. They're going to run it instead. Neal under duress and down he goes. He dodged one tackle, but Gallagher absolutely tore him down, and it's third down. Uh, Coastal's not big up front. They're front seven, but they're extremely quick and fast. But they're not going to allow you to come downhill and move them off the football. They'll fight, scratch. They got enough bigger bodies. And Gerard Clark, Travis Geiger's in there, CJ Brewer, Braylon Ryan up front. There's a little wrinkle to this Kansas offense that kind of sugar huddle. Third and three, it's a high snap, and it is Neal trying to plunge for the first down. And he is very close. Gallagher got the stop, and we will see where the mark is. Just can't get the necessary push that you need to, to clear a space for a running back for a guy like Neal. They will say first down. He did get it, so first and goal. I would anticipate those live hole going for it there if they were a little bit short on the road, trying to build a winning culture. And you can pick up a first down. Yeah, let, your guys, let your guys go, right? No, no doubt about it. A lot of running and the big hit to Grimm in the passing play. This is Neal trying to crash in, and he is stonewalled after a very short gain of about one and a half by Silas Kelly. And a flag is down. We've heard from Gallagher, Teddy Gallagher. He's made a play, and now the other inside linebacker and Silas Kelly and was described by Coach Staggs. Illegal shift on the offense. Five yard penalty. We play Coach Staggs. He was described by, those two were described by Coach Staggs, their defensive coordinator, as the smartest two linebackers that he's ever coached. Silas Kelly and Teddy Gallagher, two guys that just flat out make plays on this defense. He's got the sheriff in Kelly and the mayor in Gallagher. One was appointed, one was elected, I guess, <laughs> is how it goes. Hey, when you know your guys though defensively, yeah. they've had them around for a while. It's a dangerous group. Well, they can coach the defense themselves. A run for Neal to the outside. Neal is stood up and dropped after a gain of about four. Braden Matz from the safety spot, the redshirt senior, stood him up and held him up. Yeah, but it was Kelly that kind of rerouted him, stopped his forward progress, made him try to plant and cut back, and that's when when uh, Spillum was there to, to kind of clean things up. Third team all Sun Belt at safety last year. Had 60 tackles from that, that safety spot. Second and goal, Neal, the freshman, is submerged by the middle of that defensive line. Braylon Ryan, the red shirt freshman, a big dude, took him down. Gallagher in there, too. Yeah, Gallagher in there kind of cleaning things up. It's just not going to happen between the tackles. The Coastal saying, uh-uh, not in here, not on my watch, and not tonight. you got to figure out another way, but it's not going to happen between the tackles. 
What's your call here? I, I'm going to boot uh, Jason Bean out. I'm going to move him, you know, maybe with a little play action, try to get him on the edges and make it happen. Straight ahead. It is Neal, and he is in. Touchdown. Well, Gallagher missed a tackle, had him dead to rights in the backfield, and Neal was able to slip off and get himself into the end zone. We were just going to make it happen between the tackles behind big Mike Nowitzki. And guess what his nickname is? Dirk. Well, look. <laughs> the Euro stepped him right into the yes, end zone. he did. I love it. Hey, we got we got Fog Allen Fieldhouse Southeast over there with the waving and everything. Little Rock Chalk Jayhawk hits the road for football. And Coastal got in there with Jeffrey Gunter to spin it away. Well, he is just a playmaker, isn't he? he? Got a first quarter interception against Kansas in last year's game, and stepping up again is big Jeffrey Gunner, but Kansas with a lead here, 9-7 on the road. This is the battle for New York. Affected by Hurricane Ida urgently needs support. Donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross respond to and help people recover from this disaster. 9-7, Kansas with the lead over Coastal Carolina. Press with Kansas, two yeah. scoring drives, eating up about 11 and a half minutes of time of possession and a lead on the road here early. Kansas came in a major underdog, first Power 5 team into Brooks Stadium in history. And Coastal Carolina, who's only had the ball for a buck 54, We'll have it after this. Tomorrow afternoon, ABC College Football triple header. Man, if you've not been to Iowa, Iowa yeah. State, you got to do it once. Because the whole state is in the building. Let's be honest. If, if you like football and you're in that state, you're driving there. So that is in Ames. Then to the big house in Ann Arbor. Harbaugh and the Wolverines against the Washington Huskies. All games on the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Matt Campbell a couple years ago. Started tweeting out things at the Iowa fans. Well, yeah. Hashtag. To How about that them. though? You know, number nine playing number ten, and and you know, two a, a rival game for both. It's gonna be a good football game. First down run for Coastal Carolina. Look, Matt Campbell has a lot in common with Jamie Chadwell from Coastal Carolina, the head coach, He's Delta North State, Central. North Greenville. And now here to Coastal Carolina through Charleston Southern. Then you get the head coach Leipold of Kansas. He won six national titles at Wisconsin Whitewater. Matt Campbell with that great career at Mount Union yeah. as a player. Two winners. And I'll tell you what, guys, teams, uh, programs, the pros have come after Matt Campbell. He stayed right there in Ames. Quick hit to the outside across the 35 to Cam Brown, the seventh year college football player who's got a first down for Coastal Carolina. And these two coaches and their pathways, Leipold and Whitewater, then to Buffalo where he did some great work, one of the top running teams in the country last year, and Jamie Chadwell who has absolutely built something strong here. Yeah, he really has, and the culture here is in place of what Lance Leipold wants to do at, K at Kansas. And It'll take a little bit of time as it did here at Coastal with Jamie, Jamie Chadwell. Tell you what, White had to carry. Kansas is running to the football. They're firing defensively. Well, I mean, you talk about Kyron Johnson. I think he and, and Kenny Logan Jr. on the back end are their two special players. He can make plays. Uh, got tied for a team lead last week with seven tackles. Had a sack and a forced fumble to go along with that. He can really get off the ball fast. And when you have that play in that spot, that gives you a chance to disrupt. And that's exactly what Kyron Johnson is. At the last moment in the first quarter, McCall to run. You said he can run. There he goes to the outside. He got the corner and a first down past Taiwan Berryhill. And Coastal Carolina moving the football as we'll go to the second quarter. Dre, Kansas, big underdog, got the lead. Hanging around, my man. That's the end Nine of the first seven. quarter. The Jayhawks lead it, but we got a lot of time left in this ball game.
You're watching ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Ram Trucks. Coastal Carolina as high as number nine in the nation last year in the school of about 10,000 in Conway, South Carolina. Trailing nine to seven. And Coastal's quarterback, Grayson McCall, had a run for a first down before the break, and now he is out of the game. Bryce Carpenter is in. He started a bunch of games for them. Carpenter takes that on his first carry of the ball game, and we'll, when we get word from Kark on Grayson McCall, we'll pass it along to you, and maybe just for one play, Carpenter comes out. And I asked specifically about Carpenter, and they said he's a very consistent player. They're not gonna change much if he has to play for Grayson McCall at a, at, in terms of length, but he is, a, is, they would call a game more run-oriented if he were in the ball game, but we get McCall right back under center, or rather, in the gun. Yeah, this is close to under center as they're going to get. As he whips that to the outside right around the stick, it is likely the tight end ushered out of bounds by Bryant. Well, Clark talked a lot about Kansas and transforming players. Well, Grayson McCall kind of went through a transformation of his own this offseason. Uh, added about 12 pounds of muscle to, to kind of bulk himself up for the, the long haul of running the option, engaging defenders. I think what it's done along the way is it's built more arm strength. And you can see it in the way it delivers the ball. It's a little bit more, more uh, rev a few more revolutions on the ball than last season. Well, high spin rate. Yeah, no doubt. Third down and inches for Coastal. An option pitch to the outside has an easy first down for Reese White. That's their bread and butter counter option where you're going to start to the left, get the defense to freeze, and they may get likely for a hold here, but gonna get the defense to freeze one way, come back where you have that one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside with Johnson, and he's in a no-win situation. Well, check the marker, see if it is likely the tight end. That would negate no the first down. play for a block in the back. So to the play, this first down. How about this? Gonna pick it up. That, that is a first down. How about this? Last week we have Sam Howell from Indian Trail, North Carolina. Yeah, Tar Heel quarterback. Grayson McCall's from the same town south of Charlotte. They went to different high schools across the Andrew Jackson Highway, State Route 74. But McCall heard a lot about Sam Howell growing up. Sam Howell was basically the anointed one. He was the guy that people talked about from middle school on, and McCall has made a name for himself at Coastal Carolina, and he will hand it off on a first down carry for Jones. Second down coming up, but Grayson McCall, we spent some time with him. Clark spent some time with him. Very engaging kid, but he he don't want his football career to stop at Coastal Carolina. Uh, he's got aspirations of playing long after uh, his time here on campus. And, you know, he's got good size, 6'3", 210. Uh, he's going to add to that frame, and he can spin the football. He's a terrific athlete that can that happens to be a passer, and so. You can do a lot offensively, as they do with a guy like Grayson McCall. They're confused here, and I believe they're going to have to bury a timeout. Timeout, Coastal Carolina. This is their first charge timeout of the half. Sure, what's going on? Well, look, the receivers were looking at the sideline. Yeah. The sideline was looking at the receivers, yeah, and everybody said, no, 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 timeout. Oh. Let's take a look at tonight's colors of the game brought to you by Sherwin-Williams at Brooks Stadium. They have surf turf. It is teal. It was installed in the spring of 2015. They had regular grass before that. In case you want to recreate it, it's Pantone matching system number 322 if you want to make your own stuff at home. As Grayson McCall sets to throw and he flips it away to his tight end, Likely, who is a out a yard short. Just knowing where you are on the field, likely putting that left foot in the ground and getting upfield just to get himself close to the, the first down marker. You got, like when you run routes, you gotta get gotta have a presence in mind of exactly where you are. How about the timing of McCall to give him a chance? Andre, I appreciate a guy named Likely who's decisive. Yeah, yep, and, and a talented receiver in highly. So that, that gives you a lot of success on offense when you have a highly and a likely. Yeah, it's highly likely. Up the middle, they've got the first down with Reese White, the freshman tailback. How would you describe this offense if somebody was seeing it for the first time? Well, you know, you're, obviously the spread 
option part of it is their bread and butter. And then they have a, a magical passing game off that. But sometimes they'll just drop back and run normal uh, routes that you see in any other passing, passing scheme. They'll formation you. They will motion to get to certain things. They make a lot of stuff look different when they're running the exact same things over and over again because of the motions and the formations. But it's uh, it's complicated to look at down after down. They go multi-back, and it's McCall to throw. That's a tip ball, and it's batted around inside the five and incomplete. And he tried to force one there, the first one in a while. Rich Miller gets a hand on it, but maybe forcing that one to likely when he had a receiver on the outside, which I think was was Cameron Brown. Forcing it into double coverage. And tomorrow when Jimmy Chad will ask him, why'd you throw it in there? He'll, he'll give him the old answer. Coach, I thought I could make that play. And there's nothing contact. else a coach can say to you. That early contact, <laughs> early contact from Thomas was legal because the ball was tipped. Worth it to note there. Second down for McCall. Five in the pattern. He looks for the end zone and a marker comes in. And they're going to have pass interference and an automatic first down. Likely on a corner route. Gets behind the deep defender. And you see the touch that McCall has. That was Jeremy Webb on the coverage or harassment of Likely. Hey, he was all over him in that route. It's because of the pass route. Interference. Defense, number nine. Ball be placed at the two-yard line, automatic. First down. Because of the way the route was run, it made him think inside, and then when he broke back to the corner, it just froze the defender. And that's another Coastal Carolina. Just froze Webb, had to grab him because he knew he was beaten. And had he not grabbed him, I think likely would have run right through the football. I had a chance to keep at least one foot in bounds. But now you're dealing with first and, and goal to goal here inside of about the, the two yard line. Lee White, the freshman, is the tailback. That's likely in motion. The option. It's McCall spinning in. Touchdown, Coastal Carolina. Talked about his toughness. Kenny Logan misses a tank tackle and an opportunity to bring Grayson McCall down. But just one on one, that's a play that's got to be made if you're Kansas. You feel like your safety against the quarterback, you make that they make that tackle. But McCall is super tough when he smells the end zone. He told us he had fat heads of Carolina Panthers in his room growing up. Steve Smith. And, and D'Angelo Williams. You take Steve Smith's attitude and D'Angelo Williams running the ball, and I think you get this touchdown. <laughs> Just not going to be denied was Grayson McCall. One-on-one -on -one in the hole with one of the better tacklers for this Kansas defense. Advantage Coastal Carolina. Coastal head coach Jamie Chadwell, let's find out what's going on in his headset from his quarterback in Cark yesterday. What's head coach Jamie Chadwell like on the headset? Oh, I got I got some great memories of Coach Chadwell my freshman year on the headset. Uh, you know, Coach Chadwell is a great Christian man. Coach Chadwell doesn't cuss, so he does still get angry sometimes, but he, well, you'll never hear him cuss. So, you know, his favorite go-to when stuff doesn't go our way is, you know, son of a buck. You know, it's stuff like that. You know, he doesn't cuss, but, you know, you'll hear that from him quite often. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, Grayson McCall <laughs> with the impersonation of coach Jamie Chadwell, who we spent a lot of time with this week, and uh, he is he is a good leader and highly thought of by this team. And Coastal covers that kick. Park, that's a pretty good impression, eh? It is. Yeah, Eastern Tennessee, Jamie Chadwell, and look, the relationship between coach and quarterback here is incredible. I spent a lot of time with Grayson McCall yesterday. I was at the facility, but bigger picture. This program has so much fun. You talk to the players, fun is one of the first words they always say. They play for each other, they love each other, and the vibe here is incredible. It yeah. feels like the beach. Yeah, it really does. It feels like you're in, you know, an extension of Florida. We were talking about that on the ride over to the stadium, but this, this program, this group of guys genuinely loves playing together. 
They have come out of nowhere the last couple years as Jason Bean throws, and that is tipped right at the line for Coastal Carolina by Alex Spillum, the safety former quarterback himself in high school. And Jacob Brochet might have had, had himself won and gone to the house, trying to throw a long hitch across the field, and Brochet, whose brother uh, plays for the Baltimore Ravens and was a pretty good player at SMU, uh, he broke on that baby and had it not been tipped, it would have been a house call. See if Coastal can create one of those turnovers that they were so good at last year. Little double back by Gardner across the 20, and he is at the stick. It's going to be a Kansas first down. And the Jayhawks are keeping the ball away from Coastal for the most part. So they have gone 14 runs, five passes. And that, when you have success, and they're, at, they're finishing drives. And so when you have success, that tells me that the offensive line of Kansas played a big, big part in what's going on up front. Protecting the passer when they do decide to throw, but they're opening running lanes for this, this group of running backs. Bean to pass. Wants a deep ball down the sideline for Arnold, and that is incomplete. To Jordan Strong, who had the pick earlier that was wiped away, second down. And just great coverage on the back end by Strong. Letting them battle a little bit, letting them fight down the field. The two's doing battle, two against two. You like on the it? Outside. You say that when you're in the booth, letting them fight, letting them battle. If you're the quarterback, well, I've been lobbying for a pass interference or something. You're yelling at anybody yes, no doubt. who's got a striped shirt. But when am I not if I was on the field? <laughs> a little feisty there. Second down run, cut off at the outside by Spillum, and a nice dodge back inside into Makonzo for Gardner. It's third down. Now this could break a string. We've had four possessions in this game. Two by each team and four scores. And put points on the board here early. And we'll see if Coastal can hold up defensively to break the string. And we'll see if Kansas can convert. They, they converted on third 13 earlier in the first quarter. So it can be done. we got to combine six for seven on third down in this game for both teams. Jason Bean, who played on this field in a bowl game last year for North Texas, under pressure and sacked. On a third down and nine, Coastal Carolina gets there, and it's punt time for Kansas. That was Josiah Stewart, a little used defensive tackle who got in there. Yeah, he turned the corner. I mean, excellent job of the up and under and just continuing to rush another talented player in this coastal program. But Jamie Chadwell said to us, we got 50 guys who are new coming in here. They think it's easy. They don't know what we build. Yeah, that's part of the problem of when you have success and you're building along the way. The new recruits come in and they, it's automatically supposed to happen. Happens that way at Alabama and I think Nick Saban does one heck of a job of saying each season is ahead, its own entity. Offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. And you've got to put in the work to do what the guys before you have done, and they do a magical job of making players understand that. Uh, I think that's the same kind of culture that Jamie Chadwell has started to build here at, at uh, Coastal. And the mullets are a big part of it, too, let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, that is, that is a great shot of party in the back. Yeah. Love it. He wears it well. And Coastal gets there to pound it into the face of Vernon. And it's a shot, a clear touchdown. Alex Spillum buried the punt and is at the bottom of the pile with it. Boy, did he come off the edge like he was shot out of a cannon and found a way to get there, lays out, takes it right off the punter's foot, and then has the presence in mind to keep going, find the football, and recover it to get all of it. He didn't just do half the job, he did all the entire job. You hear this a lot about Coastal Carolina players. That was his first and only FBS offer. Alex Spillum out of the state of Minnesota.
down here to Myrtle Beach is wants players who love to play. And that will build the culture for you. This is a lovable group, Andre Ware. And they got some feisty in them, too. Alex Spillum, perfectly named for this play. A block punt, 21-9. Shot of clear, he's got the lead, 21 to nine. It's, uh, it's a mascot that's based on the uh, Jeffrey Chaucer Canterbury Tales. The big dude. That is, that is big dude. The big dude. They also, by the way, you see Coastal Carolina, the largest favorite group of five since 2008 against a power five team. They have some wild celebrations involving the opposing team as well. Uh, a couple years ago, they had a Kansas Jayhawk pinata that they knocked Candy out of when they beat Kansas. That was 2019. Uh, 52nd season of Monday Night Football kicks off next week. It's Lamar Jackson and the Ravens in Vegas against the Raiders and Derek Carr. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Louis Riddick, Lisa Salters, and John Perry are there. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, ESPN, ABC, ESPN Deportes, the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Monday Night Countdown starts 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ESPN. Biggest season ever, I'm told, twice on this card. Yeah, what's the, what are the Ravens going to do at running back? I be lose cool. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards goes down with an ACL injury in practice yesterday. You got any thoughts? Uh, I'm spinning a wheel on running backs. Maybe Lamar Jackson runs it even more as Dean <laughs> yeah. goes down. And that is Miles Olafimi, another super senior on this team for Coastal Carolina. And look, Myrtle Beach is a fun place. Everybody wants to stay around here for six, seven years. Well, you know, I'm surprised that a lot of guys didn't, you know, take advantage of the super senior season where they did here at Coastal. He's got a lot of guys back, and they look almost identical. 19 of the 21 starters are back. And Taron Jackson made the, the Philadelphia Eagles, who was drafted in the sixth round there. So that's one of the starters that, uh, that left and playing well. Pressure came right at Bean's face and this down the sideline is overthrown for Wilson. Well that was a matchup that we talked about with the, the Kansas coaches. Well gentlemen you're talking about these super seniors. One is Silas Kelly 29. He told me that it was a no-brainer for the six super seniors who were here part of the transitional year in 2016. They had to play. Kelly is a wonderful story too. Tough upbringing but he told me this week when I talked to him on the phone, he said the only issue he has about playing at Coastal Carolina is later in life, he doesn't know if he's ever going to be able to match the culture of this program, whether he's playing professional football or he's playing in Canada or potentially, you know, in the professional world as a medical device salesman. Yeah, and the field that he wants to get into. So that tells you something. When, when you're scared of what's next because of how good you have it now. Well, and Kurt, you presented that to Jamie Chadwell, his head coach, and rightfully so. Jamie Chadwell got emotional yeah. about that because he felt like it was so important to hear one of his players say that. You could say it to the coach, but when you're talking about it to other people, it hit a little bit differently for Jamie Chadwell, who was inspired by an offensive coordinator of his as a high school senior named Jack Daniels, who Jamie Chadwell said, I felt like I could conquer the world because of the way that guy motivated me. And Jamie Chadwell tries to do that for his kids, like Silas Kelly, who's been through a lot of injury trouble. Coastal Carolina, the upstart shot of clears by 12 in the second. A hey, game day intrepid producer Jimmy Gallero tells me that there's some wonderful stuff coming up on game day tomorrow, including Ashton Kutcher as the guest picker Sweet. on game day for Iowa, Iowa State. Uh, great remembrance through some coaches' eyes of the 20th anniversary of September 11th on that solemn day and some discussion of uh, some mascots that you may know and love as this goes down the sideline from McCall. And he's got a first down to Javon Hiley. You just don't see quarterbacks with that size that runs the that run the option that like Grayson McCall. You don't see 
the ability to push the ball down the field. He, he went for 84 percent on, on you know 19 passes last week against their game against the Citadel, and he's just pinpoint accurate, calm as all get out. This kind of lead, leads this offense quietly until he gets down towards the the goal line. Yeah, they will do vertical routes with the best of them. McCall loads this one up to the left side. The first down to Cam Brown. Well, you heard us talking about it. Accurately thrown to the big fella, Cam Brown. They love him and his potential down in the red zone at 6'3", about 210. But you see the play fake holding the linebackers, creating space between behind the linebackers and before Cam Brown's able to get to the safeties. That deep crosser there is, is tough to defend when the linebackers bite up. Got a son named Cam as well, Camden. Call him the old man. Been around about seven years now. Seven year, decided to play for Jamie Chadwell a second time. McCall, he felt the pocket going away. Looked like he lost the football. He got sideswiped by Malcolm Lee. He did, and I don't know if he got it back. It looks like initially Kansas fell on the ball. Don't know if they're going to get up with it, but it looks like the Jayhawks have it. They do. So Coastal Carolina, who was plus 13 in turnovers last year to lead the nation, coughs it up, and Leipold fired up. We're creating turnovers a must when you're on the road. It looked like one of the big fellas, Malcolm Lee, just kind of reached in as Grayson McCall was working upwards in the pocket, got a big hand on it. The ball comes loose, and then he's able to uh, his partner on the other side, Kyron Johnson, comes up with a fumble recovery. This is big. I mean, to stop Coastal's momentum, they've scored a couple of times in a row on offense. You get the turnover last year in that in the matchup. Coastal turn, forced three turnovers in the first half alone. Neal from Lawrence, Kansas. It's so important to get the local kids wanting to come to Kansas and start the foundation of something with a team. I mean, I'm going to read this off to you since 2010, their records, okay? 3 and 9, 2 and 10, 1 and 11, 3 and 9, 3 and 9, 0 oh and 12, 2 and 10, 1 and 11, 3 and 9, 3 and 9, 0 oh and 9. Tough. And they got it. Lance Leipold has a good enough reputation. He gets kids from Buffalo, he gets a local product from Lawrence, and he really absolutely believes with great history in a bedrock and Whitewater and Buffalo that he's gonna change this thing. They were in the Orange Bowl you know, 15 years ago under Mark Mangino, number two in the country as that is incomplete, looking for the tight end Fairchild. Well, I asked him about his recruiting philosophy this week and how he's going to put this thing together. He says, hey, we got to do the job locally. Kids like Neil that would stay home, stay in Lawrence, and then recruit the Big 12 footprint in the south, which is Texas, Louisiana, in those areas. And, uh, you know, then reside right in the middle of the country in terms of getting players uh, from that area as well, the you know, the Midwest type players. Get them to come to Kansas. Uh, how do you do that? Well, be a part of something that's being built is his message to recruits. Might be able to go to Utah now with the news today in the Big 12. Third down for Bean in scramble mode. He sees Gallagher, and Gallagher does get a piece of him. Bean goes splat on the outside. We'll see what kind of mark they give him. He just shy of the first down marker. Boy, that's close. Bean saw it, knew exactly where he needed to get to. And then Gallagher's tracking him the entire time. They're going to say first down, Andre. Right. It was so close, though. Heck of a play there by, by Jason Bean. Want to make the line to gain for some further review. This will be under review. Our rules expert, Matt Austin, is with us from his home. He needed the 36-yard line. And let's check in with Matt. You've been watching this. I know you've only had the one look at it, but what are you seeing initially here? Well, from first glance, it looked like his knee was down. He did have the ball out in front of him a little bit. I think if you go back to where the knee touched the ground and look where the ball is, I think they're going to end up with this being short. That's close. He knew exactly where he needed to get to. 
And if it's not for the effort of Gallagher, he's going to get there easily before, you know, being countered by Manny Stokes. Matt, just for people at home, when they're looking at the hand go down as well, what body parts constitute down and what don't? Well, anything but the hand. So the minute the knee goes down, right there it's down. Unfortunately, you've got number zero right in the way. So this view is not a great view. Unless you can see the knee and the ball, it might be tough to overturn. The elbow's also in play here, too. He sort of spun his wheels. Yeah. Let's After see. After further review, when the runner's knee was down, the ball was at the 35 and one half yard line. It will be fourth down and one half yard line to go. This is why we love having Matt Austin on our crew. Great Absolutely. call on one look the first time. You've got to go for this, right? Oh, it's early, Jason. They, they, uh, before team. you even finish, they, Coastal Carolina gets the ball in the second half. Yeah, man, this, but this deep in your own, own end of the field, you don't pick this up, you're almost guaranteeing points for Coastal Carolina. Now they've run the football uh, effectively, Kansas has, here in the first half. Looks as though they're going to roll the dice and go for it. I like it. We get behind the big fellow, Mike Novinsky, the center, and see if they can get some push here. They sprint to the line. Neal's the tailback, and we have a timeout, Coastal Carolina. And a smart and timeout. Getting Coastal Carolina, this is their second charge timeout of the half. At the It'll formation that Kansas likes are trying to, trying to go with on that fourth down and short. See if they can defend it or call up the right defense to defend it. See if they still do go for it. Tomorrow afternoon, ABC College Football triple header. Some highlights for you. Iowa and Iowa State, Matt Campbell and Kurt Ferentz, two top ten teams. That's 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific. Then to the big house in Ann Arbor. They dispatch Western Michigan, but Washington is certainly a different breed. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. It's the Huskies and the Wolverines. Every game on the ESPN app, one app, one tap. There you see, first top 10 team battle since 2013 in the non-conference in the same state for Iowa and Iowa State. Seventh of the preseason AP poll, highest of in any in school history for Iowa State. Kansas is going. Coastal is swarming Silas Kelly. Wow. Got to make plays one on one in the hole. Otherwise, they result in first downs in situations like that, and sometimes big plays. But Silas Kelly. Don't don't, uh, don't challenge him in the whole one-on-one. -on -one. He takes care of business, playing downhill, sorting things out, locates Neal, had a little help by one of his teammates, and now it's attack time for Grayson McCall and this offense. He almost picked him up like he was a dining room chair. He was moving into the living room. But that's exactly why I don't like shotgun with the back on the side of you because it allows for penetration and guys like Silas Kelly to get in the backfield. Take a shot here. Oh, absolutely with that play. They will run. It is Reese White with a crease for Coastal Carolina. Now what a shot is constituted as for this offense is a different beat, a breed than some offenses. Yeah, it is, but you know, they took the shot in the running game there as they run that sort of a, a counter look where they're pulling the backside offensive lineman to the front side, and then all of a sudden the back is out the front door. They come at you in many, many ways. Two tight ends, Gravett in as well with Likely. It is white again. And now some steam and some wow. wind behind Coastal. It gets breezy here, and the breeze is behind the offense, a gain of 11. You can see why the coaching staff loves Reese White. How tough he runs between the tackles, and he's the speed back. He can, he's the speed element in this offense. Now, again, Jamie Chadwell in this offense, they started the last drive throwing the football around. Gave a couple of play action fakes, hit Cameron Brown on a big cost, crossing route, throwing it the majority of that drive. Here they start, they're attacking you on the ground again, keeping this Kansas defense off balance. Again on the ground with White. McCall goes in, puts his head in against a Kansas player, gave him a little shove. Gavin Potter was in on the stop. Grayson McCall, you got some grit now. 
He went he after does. the guy who went after his guy. And you see the, pat, the play break down there, 15 runs, eight passes. But at the end of the day, it results in balance, 107, 102. That, that defensively is hard to fade. It is hard to figure out what's coming at you when you have that kind of offensive production. Even though they've only had the ball for about 10 minutes of this first half, Coastal Carolina with McCall this time. Over the top and incomplete. Yeah, Flank's and gotta come. Comes in. Gotta come. Just it, yeah, it was Brian against Brown, and he turned him into a turnstile. And this is where you heard me talk about it earlier. They love Cameron Brown because they feel like he could be a red zone. Uh, Big red zone receiver down here and help him out in that, that's that, that, that area. Defense, defense number two. Foul occurred to the end zone. My rule the ball be placed at the two yard line. Automatic. First down. Yeah, that's a freshman at six foot, Jake Jacoby Bryant, working against 6'3, 210, and a big physical receiver in Cameron Brown. Sets him up nicely. He's going to flatten it out. And just the hand behind Cameron Brown turning his body is what drew the attention of the officials. This is a run, right? I would think so to, to Reese White. It is. And he is in. Touchdown, Coastal Carolina. Wait, he didn't wait on Grayson McCall. He saw the hole. He was like, quarterback, get, get it to me. Come on with the ball, because I'm, I'm getting in this hole. Wow. Yeah, Reese White was double parked. Third touchdown of the season, the young season for Reese White. He saw it, read it, and it was right downhill. It, it really called on Grayson McCall to, to force him to get him to football because he was not going to slow down. So after the turnover on downs and the stop from Silas Kelly, Coastal Carolina, who gets the ball back after halftime, has pounded in another touchdown. And Biscardi on the extra point is good. Kansas needs a response drive here after the fourth and one failure to convert, turned it over to Coastal. They've got to come out and put something on the board here, just from a momentum standpoint. So I tried to walk you in last week to why Miami would upset Alabama <laughs> and walked you directly into a brick wall. Yes, so I'm going to ask you how uh, Coach Scott and USF are going to beat the Gators tomorrow. I don't see that one happening. Come on, you got to answer the question. Uh, no, I don't see it. I don't You're see not. that one happen. You're out for that? No, I'm out for that one. Florida, Florida's a good football team. They found some, found a quarterback. There's life after Kyle Trask. And, Dan Mullen's a foot, good football coach. I, I don't see that one happen. Did you say Dan Mullen? Is that <laughs> so Mullen has hurt you slightly. <laughs> Jamie Chadwell, who says that's his second mullet in his life. He says his wife does not exactly appreciate it as much as maybe he and the players do. Uh, I think he wears it well. I agree. It's got yeah. some flares, right? It's got like wings on the back, which is nice. Kickoff goes out of bounds, which is not exactly what Coastal Carolina was looking for. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. The ball be placed in the 35 yard line. First down. To the studio, the Ithaca College bomber, Kevin Connors. <laughs> yes, Jason, coming up on the Sling TV halftime report. Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer here in studio. We're going to ask the boys if they think Coastal can run the table. they got a big game coming up next week. Plus, more on conference realignment. We'll take a look at some of the invitations the Big 12 handed out earlier today. Plus, locks. And we've got some work to do after week one. That's all coming up at the half. Jason? See, the deal is, if it's called a lock, you've got to get it right. As Bean goes down the sideline. And Kwame Lassiter, the second. It's a gain of 22 for Lassiter. Kansas needs points right here. Yeah, they really do. They, we talked about it. Got to have a response drive after failing on fourth and one and then allowing a, a coastal touchdown drive. You want to remain in this game. You've got to figure out a way on this drive before the half to put some points on the board. 
I know you have thoughts on realignment. We'll get to in the second half as well as Bean hits Lassiter one more time. And Kwame Lassiter, the second, whose father was such a great defensive back in the NFL. His dad passed away tragically of a heart attack a couple of years ago. And Kwame Lassiter has produced and produced his son, Kwame Lassiter the second, has played very well for this Kansas Jayhawks team. Yeah, honorable mention, all Big 12 last year, 43 catches, 458 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. He's a team captain. I really think highly of him, and he has let his play kind of speak for him. Here comes Gunter. He couldn't take down Bean, and Jason Bean stays. Nice job in the open field by Bean to maintain his balance. Just talked about needing to get on the scoreboard was Kansas on this drive. A couple of big plays by Lassiter and then the quarterback Jason Bean. When Coastal goes zone coverage, kind of left the middle of the field unaccounted for and you see some speed that I didn't know Jason Bean had. Look, he broke free. That was exceptional. And now they're going to go for two. And a timeout. Timeout for the Kansas, Kansas Jayhawks. Their first they charge timeout of the half. Extra point 40 seconds in length. Earlier in, the, in this game. He ran by the student section there where shirts are optional. Here in Conway, <laughs> South Carolina. You saw them getting revved up for the game, the student section, on our, uh, our drive in. Looked like they were having a little fun. Yeah, I think there was a, there was a cup or two being consumed over on the uh, the green there on the way in. This is a this is a school. It's a really interesting school because they in 2002 they had no football program. 2003 almost to the day in 2003 they played their first ever football game against Newberry College. They went 97 yards for a touchdown win and the head coach at that time David Bennett said We've got a gold mine here. He might have been the only person who believed that, but it turned out he was right. They're 17th in the country. They're up 13 on Kansas, and now the Jayhawks will go for two. It is Bean, and the feet got tangled. It's incomplete. He wanted Luke Grimm, who had the big catch earlier, and it's 28-15. Just looked like Grimm slipped down right as they were trying to run a little pick play to get him open. And just slips down. Might have gotten a bump. A little bump. Good job by Lassiter to try to screen there and make it look like he was in a route. But how about Kansas responding with a touchdown drive, getting themselves back in this game, and you mentioned it, Coastal. Still some time here in the first half, but they're getting it out of halftime. They got one timeout. They're pretty freewheeling. You'd imagine they'd well, I, push I, down. I expect Grayson McCall to come out throwing this thing around. Chunking it, as they say down No here. doubt. Working the sidelines with that timeout, he can still attack the middle of the field. First downs, clock's going to stop. That gives you some, some time to get plays called and, and run. Looking for the drive starter on that first play. Grayson McCall left no eye black for his teammates today. <laughs> Does that really work? I don't know. I've never used it. Baseball as players a, tell me as a player. It I don't imagine. I, I, I take their word for it. They, they would certainly know. This will be a return for Manny Stokes for Coastal Carolina, Ooh. and that may not have been a grand decision here on the Grand Strand. Coastal Carolina was at first a junior college satellite of the College of Charleston when they began, and then after that, they extracted themselves from the College of Charleston, became a member of the South Carolina uh, fleet of schools. 1993, they became independent, 
2003 they started the football program. I mean, we're talking in 1993, this school had been around for two years as a satellite campus of South Carolina. They made it to the NCAA basketball tournament for the first time in 1991, lost to Bob Knight in Indiana. And now they have a football program, top 20 in the country. The call for likely, he gets swiveled down on the outside, and a Kansas player is down. That's Ravello Dotson. Yeah, Dotson just kind of threw his Time body. out of the field at for an the injured player. Likely, and at 6'4", 240, that, that is a tough, tough guy to bring down. Romello Dotson, who made his first career start last week against South Dakota, that first win for Kansas since 2019 against Texas Tech. Good young player that this staff really likes. Good to see him get himself up. Andre, Coastal Carolina here with the different colored turf. To me, there's a little bit of like a low country Boise State vibe uh, going on here. Yeah, I see where you're going, but you know, it just, like I mentioned earlier, it just kind of reminds me of a, a Florida type setting where it's fun to go to school here and you know, recruits. So if Jamie Chadwell's recruiting you to get you to campus, it's hard to say no because of the feel of the place. It's hungry football players and he's assembled exactly that over the last couple of years. He said, look, nobody wanted a lot of these guys. And that's the runners hold the clock. That's the quite the bounds. motivation. The clock will start on my it reminded me of when he said that of Houston where so many guys thought about you know larger schools and wound up at U of H and you, you kind of take it out on the schools that you're playing. What a throw. Likely is tough to cover and he goes up to grab that bullet for 17. A, a receiving threat, one of the big three with highly and now likely the field is an incomplete McCall. pass. Second down. That is say incomplete here, Andre. I think that's right. And Matt Austin may be able to, to tell us, give us his thoughts on, on this one, whether he's in or not. Matt? It did look like to me that the first foot to hit the ground was half in and half out. Toes on the ground right there. The pole's in the way. Can't see. Maybe the back foot touched inbounds first. But from that the ruling view, of an incomplete like pass is under further review. Yeah, I, I thought maybe the left foot had a chance to tap down inbounds first, as Matt mentioned, on the back, that the other angle. It looked as though the left foot tapped and then the right came down out of bounds. At that point, it would be a completion. This will go to replay review. We'll get another look at it. Watch the back foot here, the left foot. And you can see the dirt or the, the rubber come up on the from the turf. And then the right foot's definitely out of bounds. Matt, can you tell which one came down first, and is that definitive enough on that look to say that that's not both in and out on the left foot? I cannot. They, they look like they're very close to being simultaneously on the ground at the same time. I, you can't tell. You can't even tell from that if the left foot is completely inbounds because it's right on the white. So that's a, that's a bad view for the left foot. This might help a little. What was the original ruling? Was it originally called? They originally incomplete. incomplete on the field because they reversed the call. It was initially called a catch on the side, and then the officials talked it over and waved it off. So you'd have to overturn with indisputable video evidence the incomplete ruling. That's tough, Matt. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. Do you see right. anything that changes it your is, mind and there? I, I don't see anything that's conclusive. I really don't. Uh, you know, I think the left foot might have come down, but think is usually not good enough. I agree. Well, think is definitely not good enough for this move. So this one will stand. We don't do it much. Yeah, this one will stand. Boy, it looked good, though. What a throw that McCall ripped on a corner route. And likely, by the way, he's a big target who uses his body well. You watch him on tape. He's a vertical threat, a post threat. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. It is an incomplete pass. It's third down. Just not enough to, to overturn it or confirm it. Hey, about an hour ago, we were talking about what are you going to do in your final possession of the second quarter? And now we've had back and forth over and over again. Kansas now with two timeouts remaining can get a stop here and get the ball back. 
And I would be using a timeout here if they indeed do get the stop. There's the pitch. It's Shamari Jones, and that stop is not going to happen. There is a marker down, though. We'll check the flag at the 30-yard line. It's usually in the area of holding, and so this may come back to make it a, a longer third, third down situation here. That's Kyra Johnson, who's down for Kansas. Boy, they can ill afford to lose Offense number 51. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay for the down. The center is Sam Thompson out of Spartanburg and Dorman High. All 5-9 of him. Well, they, they call the offensive line the Mighty Mites for a reason, Dre. 5-9, <laughs> 300 pounds. Right in the middle. Big Sam. Sam Thompson. The wrap around. Wasn't even near the play. Kansas hasn't gotten a stop on third down yet. This will be third down and very long. Now the clock's moving, and Lance Leipold is not using a timeout here. And if I'm Kansas, I would use one to give my offense a chance to to take the field again, with especially with Coastal getting it out of the locker room. Timeout, Coastal Carolina. This is their third and final charge team out of the half. It's a 30 second timeout. Now, if you're wondering why the clock was running, that play was stopped inbound, so the flag doesn't stop the clock. I agree with you, Andre. With two timeouts, you might as well roll the dice. And as fast as they went down the field on their prior possession, you certainly think about saving whatever time there is in the first half as to, to give your offense, especially here third and long, a chance to uh, to maybe get some more points before you go into the locker room. They were not good on third down defense, but they weren't good at very much of anything last year at Kansas. And this is clearly demeanor wise, talent wise, totally different a team. better team, much different. Third and nine. Jones stopped. And I'll call the timeout. So here's what I'd say to you. If you're going to call one here, you have Should to call one before. Timeout. Yeah, absolutely. Kansas, their second charge to the half. 30 seconds in late. Now, I know they the haven't been good third down defense wise, but if you had planned seconds. to call one, if you get a stop, the yeah, but you got to you got to think that you're going to stop them and go ahead and take the timeout safe because there's a bunch of time that ran off the clock before Coastal Thank you. took a timeout. And they were waiting until the clock ran down and almost you know, had a delay a game before they took the timeout or knowing they were going to do so. Kansas didn't know, and I wouldn't have let that time run off. Yep. Yeah, it's a, it's a missed opportunity, especially with Coastal Carolina getting the ball back after halftime. And Kansas likely feeling that 28 probably isn't going to be where Coastal ends today with their explosive offense. So Lassiter back to receive the punt. And he waves it off. And this ball goes bounding. Coastal will let it roll as the clock ticks down at Brook Stadium. And with 25 seconds to go in the first half, we'll see what Kansas does with a one timeout remaining. What would you do? Here? Oh, you're thinking field goal here, and that's what you're telling Jason Bean oh, wait, right wait, wait, wait. now. Let's just at the least get ourselves in the field goal range. Anything else is icing on the cake. The the first down, Kansas. So you're definitely trying to, trying to put your field goal kicker in the range. We just had a holding penalty against Coastal Carolina on the punt. That'll help out. Kansas has decided to take the ball, and so they will advance it to the 47. And the Jayhawks with one timeout and a quarterback with Moxie out of Mansfield, Texas, and Lake Ridge High, Jason Bean. And you're throwing for first downs here. Trying to save that timeout, kill the clock, and get another play run. It's Grimm over the middle, and he is short of the first down, so the clock will move if they don't burn the timeout. I'm going to have two plays called. They're going to try to clock it here. There's the spike. 13 seconds left, so 
half of their time went off on that connection. Yeah, their, their timeout is being saved for getting the field goal kicker on if they indeed get into his range. I don't want to belabor the point, but would you trade a timeout right now for 25 seconds? I would. Yes, no doubt about it. You know my feelings about points. You have strong feelings about oh, yeah. first half. In the point. first half. Got to score when you can. Bean, this is third down. Bean rips it toward the sideline, and this is incomplete. It was a receiver, Trevor Wilson, in the area as the officials discuss whether it's grounding or not. Wilson was making his way back uh, towards, towards where the ball was thrown. Is Gunter on the pressure again? There is no foul for intentional grounding. Number seven was in the vicinity of the pass. That was the announcement, by the way, from our referee tonight out of the Big 12, Hassel, that there was a receiver in the vicinity. So fourth down. Quick catch, get down, time out. Maybe enough time. Bean again pressured. Again slips out of the pocket. Bean turns it upfield and Waltz is out of bounds. Gunter was in the backfield one more time, and that is That's that. That's the end of the first half. For a first half that went back and forth on the final couple drives. It's 28-15. Coastal gets the ball when we come back. But for now, we go to the halftime report. With Jesse Palmer and Joey Galloway, it is Kevin Connors. Jason Benetti, thanks very much. Solid. You're watching ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Ram Trucks. Conway, South Carolina, Horry County in the Grand Strand, the home of one of the most entertaining teams in college football. Coastal Carolina up 28-15 at halftime. Paul Carcaterra is on the sideline. Andre Ware, Jason Benetti along with you. Coastal didn't have the ball much in the first half, but when they did, they hit the jackpot. Yeah, they did. They started it in the passing game. McCall to Javon Hiley, 33-yard touchdown pass, got the scoring started for Coastal, and then it was Grayson McCall himself showing the toughness to get into the end zone. They block a punt and score that way. Alex Spillum, not only the block, but the recovery as well. And then the run by Reese White, tough between the tackles to give them this 13-point this lead here at the half. So your first half stats, Coastal Carolina, despite only having the ball for 12.02, outgained Kansas. This is a Coastal team, Andre, that had the ball for 33.50 on average yeah. last year. They were eighth in the FBS in holding the football. So when you keep the ball away from them and you're down 13, that is what the phrase back to the drawing board was meant for. Well, that, that's kind of the misnomer that a lot of teams take when when they play Coastal, it's like, let's keep the ball away from them, and it's tough for them to score. Well, they can go down and score quickly. A minute, minute and a half, they were in the end zone uh, on their first drive, a couple of plays, and they were already you know, on the scoreboard. So they can, they can methodically take you apart, and if you, you, you possess the ball against them, they can score quickly. Jamie Chadwell, season number four, off and on as the head coach. He took over for Joe Moglia, the former CEO at TD Ameritrade. And Coastal has the ball out of halftime downstairs. Kark. Well, Jamie Chadwell, Jason, loves to be seen offensively. He said the balance has been really, really strong. They're putting a lot of pressure on Kansas defensively because of the option run game and then Grayson McCall and his arm through the air. The conflict is defensively for Coastal, dealing with Jason Bean. The first thing he said out of his mouth in regards to Kansas's quarterback was the speed. And I will tell both of you, field level, the speed of Jason Bean is real. Is that right? Yes, he's faster than you. Okay, well, that's everybody on earth. So thanks, Kark. We'll see if we can get your burgundy pants in later. Jones on the run on first down. It'll be second down coming up. 
for Coastal Carolina, which was just three for four on third down in the first half, but big plays were the story. Yeah, it really was. I mean, that 33-yard pass, there you go, to uh, to Javon Hiley just kind of got it all started and showing you the big playability. I think Brandon Bennett had a big run on that, that first drive as well, 27 yards. McCall on the run, a little stiff arm, and he goes down in a heap into the legs of Nate Betts. Johnson had him low. Well defended there by Kansas, and just kind of stringing out. Grayson McCall not allowing him to pitch or Ed forcing him to keep it and having two guys. That's one of the rules of the option, is if there's two guys outside the tackle box or play side in which you want to run the option, genuinely, you check out of it and go the other way. There, there were two, and defended well by Kansas. Third down and two. They'll spin the option the other way, and McCall gets bear-hugged and dropped by Kyron Johnson. They describe him as an athletic freak, and look, the progress was stopped there. Johnson just blew that up. Mentioned his ability to get off the ball fast. Super explosive with some twitch and you'll see 15 just kind of make his way to Grayson McCall. They leave him kind of unblocked looking for a second level block and leaving him for the quarterback and he took care of business. Big stop for Kansas out of halftime from Kyron Johnson who his teammates say has never had a bad day. Always smiling, always happy. <laughs> He is a tremendous player as Lassiter waves for the fair catch and grabs it at the 35 yard line. Yeah, so when you look at the score, being down by 13, you go for it on fourth and one on your side of the field. Don't convert, that led to a touchdown. He had give up a block punt for a touchdown by Alex Spillum. That's the difference in the ball game right there. Otherwise, we're we're singing a different song, and Kansas coming up with a big stop of their own there on third down, forcing a punt. Give up those two plays. You're playing for the lead right here. Bean with a throw. He's got Grimm giving ground, and because he wow. gave the ground, they won't give him the forward progress. When he decides to make another move and step back, yeah. that reestablishes his location. You try to teach receivers in a crowded area, get vertical in a hurry. Don't bubble back because he gave up five yards on the gain of where he caught the football about the 40-yard line. It, it ended up in a, in a result, a net result of one. So just get vertical, and you're not going to beat or juke everybody. Get what you can get and get down. Don't bubble back, you say. That's exactly right. Gardner got some speed. Wow. And he's got a first down down the sideline. That was nifty. My goodness, Velton Gardner. It looked like he was going to get tackled about three times. He ends up with 18 yards. They're going to rule him about the 46-yard line or so, but a nice job of Kind of putting his foot in the ground, making a defender and Strong, Jadorden Strong, just froze him. Showing a little speed uh, uh, to go along with it. But that was all Gardner by, by making Strong, who had outside leverage uh, to make the play, making him miss. Now Tory Lachlan in the backfield. He blocks for oh boy. this run. And up the sideline, it is going to go for a touchdown for Jason B. There is the speed that Clark talked about that Jamie Chadwell mentioned at halftime. That's beat beat speed. That's like, you know, you're playing at 4-3 speed. Great block by, by uh, Lachlan to free up his quarterback. And then it was just speed. I mean, angles eating up and everything. The of the and nobody can can put a hand on Jason B. Question is, did he step out of bounds? I don't think so. Very close on the sideline. We got the one look at it. We have our rules expert, former official Matt Austin along with us. And as we get another look at this replay, let's check in with Matt and see what you see, Matt. Yeah, at first look, I did not see him that close to the sideline, but yep, he did right there. 15. Oh, right there, 15 yard line. 
Wow. And he was past the traffic already. Just We talked about that early in the first half of knowing exactly where you are on the field. He didn't need to do it. I mean, there was room there. That's enough to overturn, right, Matt? That is clearly out of bounds. I certainly think so. The, the trouble is he's got black soles on the bottom of his feet. So is that green that's still showing or is that black from the sole of his foot? That's going to have to be determined by the replay official. I, I, I have thought he was Paul out of Simon and had diamonds on the soles of his shoes, man. <laughs> Very true. I think they're going to bring this back to about to the 15 yard line. I agree with you. I what agree with speed, Matt. though. Wow. Going forward, now they figured out, and that's kind of part of the process for Coach Leipold, Lance Leipold, is, is who can do what. Now you know you have a threat at the quarterback position. As you go through the season, more and more quarterback runs are going to be called for Jason Bean. Because he is certainly a threat to break one at any time. His offensive coordinator, Andy Kotelnicki, referred to him as a fixer. He's the type of guy who makes things better when you have a bad situation. And Jason Bean won this starting job against Miles Kendrick and Jalen Daniels in the preseason. Staying hydrated on a warm night in South Carolina. Look, Kansas, a team that at points folded last year, if we're being honest is After a game review, challenger. The ruling of a touchdown stands. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Shocked everybody up here. Matt Austin, what do you think? Well, again, it has to be clear and obvious that he is out of bounds. And with that shoe, I I'm not so sure that it was in their eyes. And you have to default to the ruling on the field, which was uh, inbounds and a touchdown. Wow. OK. You said it when you were analyzing it the first time around yeah. that it might not be enough. Well, we're glad we have Matt with us every Friday night. Borchilla on the extra point. And a flag comes in. Little offsides here and half the distance. Lance Boykin, who was early. I wonder if that changes things for Coach Libel when you're at the one, working from the one. Neutral zone infraction on the defense, number seven. The penalty is declined. Well, let's see. Don't you think Hassel sounds a little like Matt Austin, by the way? It's the like. penalty is declined. <laughs> we will retry for extra points. He actually does. Matt, is he your sound alike? <laughs> I've never been told that before, but who knows? Do all the refs sound alike, I guess. I don't know. I, it sounds to me like Matt Austin as, a, as an impersonator. Borchilla for the extra point. And Kansas makes it a six-point game. Tell you what, they got a stop. And they punched in. Jason Bean, Andre Ware. Showing some, some speed to this Kansas offense and has his team right back in this ball game. That will make you move 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, countdown crew on ESPN in the app. Patrick Mahomes and Alex Smith, our new teammate. Plus, Aaron Rodgers' possible last opportunity in Green Bay. Plus, early breaking stories, injury updates, previews of each game. If you have a fantasy question, send it to Andre Ware if you have his phone number. <laughs> no, sir. No? Won a few of them, but not my fair share. Not enough. How about Kansas? They come right back at a stop of Coastal Carolina to start this second half. And now this will eventually be a touchback on the drop by Stokes. So now, Coastal Carolina by six, and Grayson McCall leads it back out. Yeah, he's done it through the air. They're just kind of freezing defenders with that option attack, and then is letting them have it. Highly Cameron Brown, every likely he's been involved. And then he's been able to pull it down and make plays with his legs as well. This guy is a dual threat in every definition or every way you could you could say it. He defines the word or the words dual threat. 
That guy on the other side of the field challenging him, though. Bennett goes down. Kansas and Lance Leipold, a game effort, Cart. Indeed, and I spoke to Lance right before the third quarter started. He said this defense of his is under a lot of pressure because McCall and Coastal Carolina will have multiple looks. They got the run option game and then the pass game. So you can't just swarm to the ball. You have to be assignment based. You have to be principle based and you have to really trust your instincts in terms of where the ball's going because it comes at you in all different angles. Highly over the top into Kansas territory. Kark, you spent time with Grayson McCall yesterday. What do you think is inside of him on a drive like this? You know, I think he loves proving that he's a passer. I think when people look at this offense and they break it down with the option run game, he gets tagged as a option quarterback. He loves throwing the ball. He loves answering the bell, too. You know, he told me the big drives, whether it's the beginning of the third quarter, late in the fourth, that's what he lives for. He watches guys like Tom Brady last night. He wants these types of moments to take over a game. Yeah, I think the word you said, the key word there was passer. Most guys that when, you, when you're running an option attack, you're a thrower. You know, you're hoping to complete passes. That read that he just made and the throw, the type of throw necessary to beat two deep zone, there is driving no the ball the play for a false start. Go first down. Driving the ball after the receiver takes an outside release on the corner, in between that window of before he gets to the safety, you got to drill that ball, mm -hmm. and that's the throw he made. That gives the play an absolute chance to work. Reese White doubles back. Big gap on the outside, just short of the 35-yard line. Jeremy Webb took him down after a gain of 13. This is run by Reese White. Starting one way, that counter, running the counter, pulling the tight, tight end around out in front. And they are clicking on all cylinders right now. Quick set, nearly Ooh. picked off. Looked like miscommunication there. It was right through the arms of Webb. And Webb took a monster break on the football. Saw and read the eyes of Grayson McCall. I'm not sure a receiver converted to a fade. It's kind of in a gray area. He was. He, he's McCall sitting. Or excuse me, Webb is sitting. And a receiver to that side decided to go ahead and fade it. And, and that leaves McCall out there by himself, pretty much. Bennett out of the backfield. He is hit and keeps his feet. Third down and three for Coastal Carolina coming up as Potter missed the tackle. And that's one that Potter's got to be able to bring Brandon Bennett down in the open field. Such speed that he was able to shake free of Gavin Potter and get him in third and short. And it's a whole lot better situation for Kansas if Potter's able to make that make that tackle to make him basically it's third and long at that point. But this is where you're gonna get some, some Grayson McCall. Here he is. He goes to Latushko, Greg Latushko, who they call Mr. Third Down, and you just saw why. Unselfish player, blocks on the edges, and then when it's Third down time, that's who they go to because of the, the sure hands. Excellent route runner, but just loves doing the dirty work on the outside in this option attack. And you gotta have those guys that block down the field, that hold, hold the leverage on the outside for you in this offense. Which has been a great third down offense the last year and two games. They were 52% last year. McCall shoves it to the outside. White. Jason, how about the job of Isaiah Likely? I love the unselfishness of players on the outside. Likely blocked his guy into the end zone. Keep a look, keep an eye on number four as he'll pop into the screen and the job that he does coming across the formation out in front, and he's just gonna block his guy into the end zone. Doesn't give up on it, doesn't give him a chance to get back in the play. Oh, I love the unselfishness. You like kicking the extra point here, Andre? Yeah, I do. 
All right, you're not chasing points. Go ahead and, and, and kick it. That was a 10-yard block for Likely. That's what made the play go. That block by Isaiah Likely cleared a pass for Reese White. Love the blocking on the outside, the unselfishness, the pitch. The result, touchdown because of the block. There's an America we build. This week, college football is coming together to recognize the important role of teachers and their impressive efforts during the ongoing pandemic. On behalf of the College Football Playoff Foundation and ESPN, we'd like to donate a $1,000 Donors Choose gift card to Beth Johansson at Coastal Carolina University for her hard work and commitment to the kids in her classroom. They can use the money for any school resources they need for the students. So congratulations to Beth Johansson here at Coastal Carolina University, a building institution. Their enrollment is up to a record this year, over 10,000. And for more on our teacher of the day, Beth Johansson, here's Card. Yeah, I had a wonderful conversation with Beth yesterday. She's a lecturer in the Recreation and Sports Management Department. And she's a busy one, teaching five courses a semester. She told me she loves teaching freshmen watching their journey from start to finish and helping shape them. One of her favorite classes she teaches, outdoor recreation, which includes kayaking and mountain climbing. Students get challenged, they get uncomfortable. That's what she loves about it. She sees the growth and the teamwork aspect. I'll tell you, I wouldn't mind going back to college, taking that class and having you two join me. I wouldn't mind doing that. That boat would capsize so fast we get back if we here. were kayaking <laughs> together. We, make, we get back here, we might have to I have to look into that. Go over and take a class on a, on a Thursday. Andre's a yes, I'm a no. You guys go out in the kayak together. First down for Kansas. Bean is hit and dropped. Now the ball came loose. Let's see. Gallagher came flying in like he had the football. It's going to be second down. Gerard Clark, the big dude in the middle, got the hit. Yeah, he is. He is a pile pusher in terms of moving guys around up front. Came here, they wanted to play D-line, was recruited as a tight end. And he came in 300 plus. I said, well, you got to move to the offensive line. He asked Coach Chadwell to move the defense. And, and if he got himself into better shape, he could move and obviously did. Coastal's defense is firing in a big way. That's Enoch McConzo again. Third down, he's been very active today. Yeah, we've seen Kansas overcome third and long in this ball game. The first drive, they were able to do it. So we'll count them out, especially the legs of Bean, who is already over 100 yards rushing. That's the second time in his career. As he's had runs of 34 and 46. And he's got a 200, about 206 of Kansas's 265 or so yard total yards. Another 80 percent of their offense has come through Jason B. Very steady hand. Crowd rises on third down. B on the roll. He unloads down the field, and it is caught. Trevor Wilson's first grab. He held on on a big hit downfield. And it's a gain of 40. Braden Matz, the safety coming over to introduce himself. But how about this throw? Going left and throwing back somewhat towards the middle of the field. And the concentration by Wilson to hold on to the football. That's big time. Spillum tripped. And Kansas gets 40 yards out of it. This is Bean. And he goes down, tripped up foot high by Derek Bush. And that's a heck of a tackle by Bush because you're about to witness fifth gear by Jason Bean if he doesn't make that tackle. We watched it, their previous drive, and it was getting ready to happen again. That's a nice open field tackle. Derek Bush out of Tucson, Arizona. They have recruited to get this core group from just about everywhere for Coastal Carolina. His only official visit was here, and so many guys are in that boat for this shot to clear his team. Bush had an interception in last year's game. Dart 
Wagner. Pressure camp, the weak side. Makonzo again swarms in. Just can't do it. You can't do it as, as a running back. When it's not there, you've got to learn to, to get back into the line of scrimmage and take whatever's there. When you try to bubble it and bounce and hit a home run on every run, all you're going to do is put your offense in bad player. shape. McConzo may have hurt his wrist or arm on that play. He was grabbing his arm. One of his teammates helped him up, but it looked like he didn't exactly want to get up. So they're going to check on Enoch McConzo out of Quebec by way of New Mexico military. And well, they started the year last year with McConzo and Kendricks Gladney kind of split in time at that nickel spot. And then McConzo kind of took over, had 76 tackles on the year. So Gladney's a good replacement if if uh, McConzo's got to go out for a while. We'll check on him. Conzo went into the tent. He is now out of the tent. And here's what happened as Kansas gets ready for a third and 20. Kind of friendly fire there. Beat over the middle for Lassiter, and he zigzags close to field goal range. It would be about a 50 yarder. You're down 13. What do you think here, Andre? Well, Career long is 48 yards against TCU a couple of years, actually last year against TCU. So 50 yards, I guess about right at, at 50 yards. I like the call here. Make it a 10 point game. Might make a different call if it's not year one in your program for Lance Leipold. Borchilla had it blocked. Coastal Carolina blocks it. It is Spillum again. Now there is a marker down. Spillum has become the deflector for this defense and special teams unit. If it's offsides against Coastal. Offside. Yeah. Defense number 23 was in the neutral zone at the snap. Mm. There's a change coach Leipold's decision here and send the offense back on the field on fourth and short. I think it should. What about you? I think you go for it here. No doubt about it. And lined up in the neutral zone and then Spillum has found a way to get to the kicker. There was a punt block at first or earlier in the game and this is just all about scouting. And a good job by the special teams coach. Cutting him loose. Fourth and short. They've been turned away once in this game and led to a touchdown. Let's see if they can convert. Bean for Gardner. He dropped it. Oh, no. You could see him look away and prepare himself to run just in the split second of when he should have been looking to pass into his hands. Just pulled him down way too fast, and the ball slips through. <clears throat> Remember what Lance Leipold told us about what he wants from his team? It is how you respond. There are bad situations. How do you respond? We saw his positivity over on the sideline. He and his staff are going to try to put that in the back of their minds and get a stop of Coastal Carolina's offense. That doesn't mean it's not frustrating for the first year head coach. Good point. Grayson McCall back to the steering wheel for Coastal Carolina. And he will throw to the outside for a first down and then some. And a hurdle job by Likely for a gain of 19. Well, he did the same exact thing in last year's matchup against Kansas where he went airborne. Excellent hands. They do a nice job on the outside of running coverage away, slipping the tight end out. It's highly that it takes coverage backwards and then likely slips out into the flat. And the whole thing is timed well by Grayson McCall. Likely from near the shadow of the Harvard campus in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Gets the game for a first down and this second down carry for Reese White. 
And he has had some game tonight. A couple of touchdown runs matching last week's total of two. 93 yards on 11 carries. Here's what's coming up. Josh Heupel in Tennessee against Pitt at noon Eastern on ESPN tomorrow. That might be a pretty good football game, Pitt at Tennessee. I think so. Yeah. I think you're on to something. Don't forget Ashton Kutcher on game day for guest picking duties with the crew. There's that option. McCall to the weak side and a first down on the pitch for Bennett. Well, that's one of the beauties of this offense is that you know, they don't always run to the strong side where the tight end likely is lined up. They'll go weak with the option. They'll go strong with it. They'll counter where you think they're going one way and all of a sudden they, they, they run the counter option. And then when you have a bead on there, you think you've got it just about defended. McCall will come out and just spread you out, throw the football around for an entire drive. They are tough to defend when you have that many components in your offense. He's got six incompletions in two games this year. Grayson McCall after the Citadel game in week one. He keeps it himself and finds an alleyway and just dodged a massive shot at the 34 yard line. It'll be second down and eight. He just got out of the way as Logan was coming in. Yeah, their playmaker on the back hit was bearing, barreling down at him. Actually, Bryce Carpenter, who they sneaked into the game. And yeah, pardon me, that was Carpenter in. So McCall back in now on second down and two. To your point on McCall, 84% last week against the Citadel throwing the football. Jones twisted down. It's going to be close, and it looks like he might be half a yard short. Peyton Hatcher took him down. Let's see based on the spot. And they go to this kind of. It is third. No, they are going to move the chains. One of the markers said third down for a moment. They have these LED numbered lights as you see. The far one had a three. The near one had a two. Now there's a four and a one. So we've seen all the numbers. They go to this tempo where they're dangerous when they get in in this look. McCall loads it up down the sideline for Likely, and he's incomplete. Kenny Logan was stapled to him, and the crowd wants a flag. The student section, especially, it's second down. Oh, that's just good coverage by, by Logan on the back end. You mentioned he's the playmaker, or one of them, on this defense, and he does a heck of a job. Of, he was basically flat-footed, and Likely was you know, racing up the sideline. He got back into coverage and made a play. He was early. A little early for me. A little early. Still a good play. McCall again. He's got Highly one more time. That worked very well for them for a touchdown in the first half. This goes for 14. Yeah, that, they hit this, this this exact play for a 33-yard touchdown pass to like to Highly in the first quarter. Time out on the field for an injured player. Tempo turning out to be a little bit too much for this Kansas defense. That is Logan who's down. Kenny Logan Jr. Who has hit it off with Lance Leipold. Having a heck of a game. Logan leading all Kansas defenders with seven tackles coming in making a nice stop it was just a lot of contact there around the shoulder area I mean he made a really strong effort there to try to avoid a crowd of the helmet contact piece yes. to me so Logan's going to come off to first down Coastal Carolina Coastal's been balanced tonight Talk about their offense, its versatility, but it also has balance. 183 yards rushing to 179 yards passing. That will keep you on your toes, excuse me, on your heels defensively. Saw McCall just trying to fire up his right guard, Trey Carter, making his 50th career start tonight. Yeah. 
option for Jones to the short side again, and he is dragged out of bounds by Taiwan Berryhill. Look, there are a lot of wrinkles in this deal. We saw Ole Miss run a pop pass over the top, and we asked Jamie Chadwell about it after they came against Louisville last week, and he said, oh, yeah, been there, done that. We've done that, that creative play Ole Miss ran. He liked it, though. He did. He did, yeah. He was not he the design of it. Yeah, he liked the design of it. They, they have a play in their playbook that's a lot like it and has run it. They have running, as you mentioned. Nice lead block by White, and Jones somehow barrels across the five. Reese White threw his body at that play to lead the way for Jones. And that's kind of where Clark was talking about earlier, this team loving one another, playing for each other. You start to see the unselfish play. We talked about Likely and his block to help Reese White get in the end zone. Well, guess what? Reese White's in the game, and he's going to go out and throw a block for Jones. It's just the unselfishness of each player on this offensive unit, it's, it's unreal. First and goal, McCall. Breaks out of the pocket, a little pump fake, and he seeks the sideline and has to hurdle over a sub sandwich advertisement to set up second down and goal. Athlete. Athlete right there. Mid, <laughs> mid stride. You could have stacked like five with or an six, obstacle. Yeah, five or six sandwiches up, and he'd have gotten over them. <laughs> it was fun watching him execute because there's so much he can do. You have that kind of athletic ability, and oh well, yeah, by the way, he's a pretty good passer as well. Tough to defend. Was a really good pitcher in his youth as well. He pitched in Cooperstown back in the day, coming from North Carolina. Third quarter's over. Coastal Carolina trying to knock off Kansas from the Big 12. Fourth quarter when we come back. Outset of the fourth quarter, we thank you for joining us. Paul Carcatera is on the sideline. Andre Ware, Jason Benetti, our entire crew for Friday Night Football this year. And Jamie Chadwell in Coastal Carolina, 17 in the nation. They play Buffalo next week. And they're trying to punch it in here out of the third quarter break. Reese White, the front door was closed. He is hit and he's dropped. It is Rich Miller who got in there first. We'll kind of push the pile forward for a few yards. So then that brings up his third down. Down the distance markers have gotten all confused. Well, we're down off. here, so you know, I, I expect Grayson McCall to get on the get on the edges here. It looked like in this formation, it's a downhill formation. The weak side run a bunch on this drive. White the tailback. And it's the option to the strong side. White touchdown. Shot clear. Third one of the night for Reese White. And Malcolm Lee misses a tackle that allowed Reese White into the end zone for the third time. That tremendous speed. So if you're just a, just a hair late, he makes you pay. Runs right through the tackle of Malcolm Lee, or the attempted tackle. Well, being honest, I mean, it is it is a whiteout tonight, so he's bound to score a couple of touchdowns, right? <laughs> yeah. No fun. No. Pun intended, I think, is the slogan of our telecast this year. So tonight, especially. Yeah, speak for yourself on that. Three touchdowns, 99 yards. We've seen a lot of good blocking from Coastal Carolina, including this on the touchdown on the outside. Yeah, watch, watch big Cameron Brown, number 11 here, go to work on this touchdown run and with a block. This is another unselfish act here. Just hey. Give you a little shoulder while I escort my man into the end zone. Wow. There is something here at Coastal Carolina. You can sort of sense it. And again, 
Jamie Chadwell has said, we don't take ourselves too seriously. He, he wore the mullet because he said, we'll win the Sun Belt title. I'm going to wear the mullet. It's his second mullet in his career. We checked the game notes. His last one, the head coach of Coastal Carolina, was in fifth grade when he was evidently following along with New he had a perm and a mullet at the same time, which is a perfect Quinella. Uh, I'm telling you, I said it earlier. I like it on you. Where they will. It fits. I mean, the program is full of them, and they act like they are having a great time as they play football. We got all sorts of stuff this weekend and Monday. U.S. Open Women's Final tomorrow afternoon on ESPN. Saturday night football on ABC. Washington at the big house. Sean McDonough on the call in Ann Arbor squaring off against Jim Harbaugh at Michigan. Men's Final U.S. Open Sunday afternoon on ESPN. And then Monday night football week one. Ravens in Vegas against the Raiders. That's on ESPN and ABC. Peyton and Eli Manning are on ESPN 2. ESPN Plus has some other options. All of it's on the ESPN app, one app, one tap. Peyton and Eli are going to be fun this year. Yeah, they will, but this has been fun, too. Look at the total yards. 152, 152 for Kansas. That's some balance. Bean to the outside. Bean got a block from Grimm. And not a whole lot there for Jason Bean, who has individually been a powerhouse for Kansas tonight. He's kept them in this game, that's for sure. At one point, he was near 80% of their offense, of their total offensive yards. Just the, the game he's having is, he's got to be uh, eye-opening for this coaching staff where you found some stability at the most important positions on the team, the quarterback. He stands in, takes a hit. And this is down the field for Lawrence Arnold, who had a huge game last week. And Arnold has a first down on a gain of 37. Boy, he is a weapon. Jason Bean is going to be a weapon. Can run and has beep, beep speed, and then can sit back in the pocket and just throw dimes like this under pressure. There's two or three defenders around him, and he throws one heck of a pass to Lawrence Arnold. Arnold. First two career touchdowns came last week for Lawrence Arnold in front of his family who came up from Texas. Lawrence Arnold has recently lost his father and his mom was there watching that game and a huge game to get Kansas the win. It was a beautiful Officials moment. Out on the field. A couple of touchdown the catches in that game. Two to be exact on three catches for the game last week against South Dakota. How about this? Lawrence Arnold said his mom came up to him after the game, gave him a big hug, and said, your dad would be so proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. Tough. This is a tough situation for that young man. They will run on first down and kneel the freshman from Lawrence across the 30-yard line. This Kansas team, you watch tape from last year, there's a lot more gumption, there's a lot more will and drive, don't you think? I, I just totally agree with you. And just give, give Coach Leipold a little time to kind of put this thing together, to piece it together. He's got a kind of a formula for fixing it and getting it ready and revving. Just got to have a little bit of time to do so. Bean gets hit from the blind side. And this is incomplete, Cart. He took a shot. Oh, Bean is down. Bean is down and hurt. That was Derek Bush. Jason Bean did not see the pressure coming. And he got hit very hard. Completely from the blind side. Leipold is not happy and he's worried about his quarterback. He's, I think he's wanting a roughing the passer penalty. What do you think, Andre? It's close. It's so bang bang that I'm not sure the, the hit itself is what hurt him. It's when he landed on his either right shoulder or right arm. That's what did it. Awful thing for Kansas. Jason Bean has been so good. Daniel's getting loose. We'll check on him when we come back.
Coastal is up by 20, and unequivocally, Kansas's best player tonight has been Jason Dean, their quarterback. He's on the sideline right now. Trainers were working on his right wrist. He's a righty. That's his throwing arm. And it looked like he was okay in terms of the ability to get the ball out of his hands when he was warming up moments ago. I expect him to be back in the game. Kark, thank you very much. Jalen Daniels from south of L.A., and north of Long Beach came in for that handoff to Neal, and your right card, Bean, is right back into the ball game. So that looked ugly, Andre. He's back in after a play. Yeah, he had a play earlier in this drive that he hit Lance Arnold on that I'm not sure if he hit a helmet, but he got banged up. That's where it kind of started and then got hit again the last time he was in the ball game. But good to see him back on the field. Bean to the end zone for Arnold, and it's incomplete. Derek Bush, who had the hit on Bean, had the coverage that time for Arnold. One of, one of those. That was first touchdown pass last week. Fair touchdown passes. Great game, as we mentioned. From a good high school program in Texas. DeSoto. Yeah, DeSoto is usually loaded. Loaded and in the playoffs, it seems like every year. Second down, Bean to the weak side and incomplete. Trevor Cardell, the backup tight end, the intended target, and he got lifted by Matts. Third down. Tremendous athlete. Also on the baseball team at Kansas, but the coaches felt like Trevor Cardell really developed uh, in fall camp. It really came along, was going to give him another option behind Mason Fairchild. The big guy at 6'5", going to put some weight on him this throughout the season, maybe in the offseason, add to that 235-pound frame. Kansas wants to stay in this game, third and ten and fourth down two would be necessary as Bean whips it wide and that's incomplete for Arnold who wasn't close to the ball in double coverage anyway. We're gonna go for this right now. Yeah, he's dancing and entertaining defensive backs and the ball's in the air. Get into your route and commit one way or the other. And I'm sure that wasn't the design for him to release inside with a guy right over his face. And obviously the way Jason Bean threw the football, he wasn't thinking uh, are calculating it that way either. Still can pick up a first down right about the, the five yard line. Fourth down, Kansas. Bean is sacked. Landing from the outside. Again. And Coastal Carolina gets the stop. Where they saw Tyron Jackson go to the NFL and they needed another presence on the outside and Zero has been there all night. A couple of sacks in this one. Jay Stewart is contributing in a major, major way. Josiah Stewart with the sack for Coastal Carolina. The Shauna Clears will take over when we come back. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Ram Trucks, Motor Trend's Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. What a great hairband they would be here at Coastal Carolina. I mean, that is like, that is like 80s rock stuff going on. Uh, the mullet took off last year during quarantine when guys couldn't really get haircuts and it's become a thing here at Coastal Carolina. It is, uh, it is a beautiful thing, you have to say, as uh, Coastal will run it. During lacrosse season, Paul Carcaterra travels around and cuts hair of players from <laughs> across lacrosse. What do you think of this, Mr. Barber? I think it's tremendous. I would love to sit down with Jamie Chadwell and Grayson McCall and get into those heads. You know, Grayson told me yesterday, he said every mode is unique and beautiful. He couldn't tell me who had the best on the team. And it's great that the team embraces this whole fun mantra and 
Chadwell, as you mentioned earlier, Jason, he promised if they won the Sun Belt, he'd have a mullet. He has a mullet. Campers now, this summer, we're rocking mullets. So it's a local thing. The community kind of rallies behind. And I'll tell you, out of all the people I've worked with, one person that I think would be hysterical if he rocked the mullet, Jason Benetti. Andre, what do you think about I, I love that. I love your idea. I think he should start growing that baby right now. See, so, I, let's go ahead and shave the side down cark uh -huh. today. You know, once we get back and then start him on his on his journey. I missed a baseball game for this tonight. <laughs> I uh, I will say that that's disingenuous, Mark, because the answer clearly of everybody you work with is Quint Kesnick. <laughs> uh, he's got like the flock of seagulls hair going he right now. <laughs> he does, and everybody runs so far away. Third down, movement at the line, and a flag comes in. Boy, a long count. Maybe a hard count from the gun. He got. Got movement up front and enough of it to get the offsides and a and a free five. Gotta say the best part of this crew is they know when to turn Kark's mic off. Neutral zone infraction on the defense, number eleven. Jumped in the neutral zone, causing the offense of the catcher. That's a five-yard penalty. Still third down. Yeah, make it a little bit easier here for Grayson McCall in the offense to convert. And it is enough. It's tough enough trying to stop this coastal offense where you give them five yards on third down and long, make it a little easier for them. Third and four. And the pitch from McCall and a leap for the first down from Shamari Jones for Coastal Carolina. Yeah, these are some good backs. Jones with the toughness, the physical aspect of it. Reese White with speed, and he had a burner in Brandon Bennett, who had a big run in the first quarter of this game. Is yes, keep keep fresh backs coming at you at all times. Carl, you spent some time yesterday with Grayson McCall. Uh, what's he like off the field? I was really impressed with him. I mean, Mark Carlson from our crew, who travels with us every week, when we got in the car and we drove home last night back to the hotel, we're like, wow, what a polished, great young man, the face of your program. You couldn't think of a, of a better person, to be quite honest with you. He's, he's laid back. I asked him what he really likes to do on his spare time. Well, he lives alone, so he's kind of like a, a, a chill guy. Loves to fish, loves to saltwater fish, loves being out in the ocean told me that his family always would vacation at Myrtle Beach. So when he traveled down here from North Carolina on a recruiting trip, he familiar with the area, couldn't be happier here. And I asked him, why do you live alone? You seem like a big team, guys. Doesn't want to deal with anyone else's dishes, he told me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is a program that has built out of nowhere, literally, as McCall takes a hit. They did not have a football program 2003. Their first ever football game, September 6, 2003. They played Newberry College, and it took a 97-yard touchdown drive to beat Newberry College at the Horn, basically, here at Brooks Stadium, which did not have the teal turf back then. But Matt Hogue, their athletic director, has done a marvelous job and everybody associated with this program to get them to the FBS level. And you can't even say Sleeping Giant anymore because they went undefeated in the regular season last year. Beat a pretty good BYU team last year with the second overall pick in the NFL draft, their quarterback in Zach Wilson. Reese White on the run. How about this? I used to come to Coastal Carolina with the High Point Panthers basketball team and they were in the Big South. And the radio guy for Coastal Carolina was Matt Hogue. He has advanced from radio guy to athletic director wow. at this school. And he's a marvelous guy. They have done wonderful things here. New basketball arena. Cliff Ellis from Auburn, still the basketball coach here. Cliff, who plays the ukulele on the side. Here you see the big South titles for Coastal Carolina. It's impressive the job that they've done in basically such a short period of time many signing up to play this program third and five McCall on the move and that is a first down to his backup tight end Gravette look last year plus Andre 
68% out of the pocket, 70% in the pocket for McCall. He's very good on the move. Well, we mentioned earlier, 84% last week's game against the Citadel. He's 15 and 19 tonight uh, and still cooking. So he is, I mentioned it earlier, the, the definition of dual threat at that position. Worked up quite a lather here tonight. On the grand strand, as they call it. Loves the game. Just a, a gem rat. 15 to 19, 2-11. And some more of it on the ground. He wants more. That's a dart to the outside. Hiley's had a big game. And it's a first down. This is a kid throwing the ball whose first offer was his junior year from the Tennessee Chattanooga and team. Excellent route by Hiley to get himself off pushing coverage. Oof. We're gonna go post post corner. Like excellent route runner. You mentioned at the size, 6'2, about 200 pounds. Explosive player with great hands. McCall has come out, Carpenter is in. A buck 22 for Hiley, who had 178 in the Cure Bowl last year. That's some production, isn't it? 122 tonight, he went six catches, 133 last week. This is going nowhere. Potter with the stop of Carpenter. What do you think of the teal turf, Andre? I like it because it kind of fits, you know, this university, kind of a fun-loving uh, program, and that's kind of what you get when you come here. It's, it's a laid-back feel. When you when you're riding around the community here, even the play it. card holder guys have mullets. <laughs> it's caught on. The call loads up another throw down the middle and a touchdown to Cam Brown. Love rewarding the unselfish players. We talked about Cam Brown on a block that he threw for Reese White to get him into the end zone. Well, you get back down here, go ahead and re reward the big fella, Cam Brown. Seventh year of college football, known as the old man. Great size, and he felt like he would be a red zone threat with that size at 6'3", 210. Boy, is he playing some pretty good football. Piscardi on the extra point. 49 large for Coastal Carolina tonight. McCall's not done. A little zip on it late in the night. 49 for Coastal. What it do? Penthouse, man, what a view. Fall back as I'm coming through with my whole team. They coming too, that's real. Coastal Carolina's won eight straight at home in their fifth year as a full-time team in FBS, and at 17 in the country and growing. Look out, big game against Buffalo coming next week for Coastal Carolina. Cam Brown, the most recent touchdown for the shot of clears, and Kansas will get it back with not a whole lot of time remaining on the clock. And this return from Horn Ends up going pretty short. And you ever wonder what quarterbacks and coaches talk about on the sideline? Here's Carrick and Grayson McCall. When Coach Chadwell's star quarterback makes a mistake, what does that look like? Yeah, so uh, Coach Chadwell's a quarterback himself. Uh, he played quarterback, so you know he's been there, he's done it, he knows. Uh, well, he's not he's not the type of coach that's just gonna come at you and rip you, take your head off. You know, he's gonna come sit beside you, ask you what you saw, you know, take you through some things. But you know, his favorite thing to say to me when I make a mistake is, you know, son, did, uh, am I teaching you to do that? <laughs> you know, my response every time is, no, coach, you're not. But, you know, he keeps it fun, he keeps us going, so it's fun. Son, am I teaching you to do that? Karnk, if you ever say that to me, we're going to have problems. <laughs> uh, this is great, though, when you think of what's going on here. 2016, this program was in transition to become an FBS school. And I remember talking to Silas Kelly this week. He told me their first year in FBS, they won nine straight. People were embarrassed, like walking around with Coastal Carolina football gear. 
Fast forward four years later, you got this. It's it's nuts. Yeah, you lose nine in a row, and then suddenly you're a team that's maybe top 15 come next week. We'll check on the injured player when we come back. Coastal Carolina up big. Does your deodorant keep you fresh all day? We put Dove Men deodorant to the test with Nelson, a volunteer that puts care into everything he does. It really protects my skin. It's comfortable and it lasts a long time. Dove Men, 48 hour freshness with triple action moisturizers. Experience our advanced standard safety technology on a full line of vehicles. At the Lexus Golden Opportunity. Alex Spillum went into the tent for Coastal Carolina after the injury on the kick return as Daniels comes in to play quarterback for the Kansas Jayhawks in a stadium that has a record attendance tonight of 17,697, largest crowd ever at Brooks Stadium for a Coastal Carolina football game. It's going to continue to grow as this, this program continues to have success. Well, that number is going to be shattered. And I would, I would think this year. They had the second highest attendance in this football facility ever last week against the Citadel. So now against Kansas, they go over that by about 1,500. Daniels to throw, and he's got a first down to the outside of the 45 to Lassiter. Nice throw. Young player, just a sophomore from California, Lawndale. Youngest quarterback last year to start at Kansas as a 17-year-old. That's that's going to become the norm. You do? I do. NIL. The people graduating or leaving early, miss skipping their senior years to, to get into college early. I do. Daniels drop. Don't forget, Monday Night Football in its 52nd season kicks off this coming week. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens in Vegas to take on the Raiders. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Lewis Riddick, Lisa Salters, John Perry on the field, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ABC, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Special edition of Monday Night Countdown kicks off at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ESPN. BYU Arizona at Allegiant Stadium as well. Tomorrow night, late night, 10.30 Eastern, the newest member of the Big 12, it looks like, along with some others. BYU, Kansas, looking like it's going to be joined by some new folks very soon with the news today that you heard Kevin Connors and crew talking about. And Houston, don't forget about my alma mater. Look, I figured you were going to be the Houston guy there, so I just left it right there for you. Cougs are going too. Yeah, no doubt. What do you think of that, of that move for the Big 12? I think it's great. They had to do it uh, to get themselves into a Power Power 5 conference. I think that moniker is going to go away soon. Uh, power 5. Power 5 as we get into the super conferences of four and how long the Big 12 is uh, as we know it now with the four, obviously with Oklahoma and Texas going to the SEC. The new look Big 12 with now 12 teams when everyone is sort of growing to 16. Big 10 can get there easily, and Iowa State's obviously attractive. Uh, the ACC, and, and it's kind of documented that West Virginia is inter interested yep. if they were to expand. I think they all will, along with the Pac 12. So we'll see just how long that the new look Big 12 is, is in play. Second down run for Kansas. That's not going much of anywhere for Lachlan. I will say that whatever system we end up having long term, I would like for that system to allow for a team like Coastal Carolina that goes undefeated in the regular season to play for something resembling the possibility of a national championship. Because these guys did everything that was asked of them last year, including add a game against BYU. And they ended up, no offense, they played the Cure Bowl against Liberty. Yeah, you I, I get it. Alabama I totally get went it. undefeated and played the Cure Bowl against Liberty. An entire state would and, be on and, fire. And it happened at UCF That's right. a couple of years ago as well. So, yeah, I, I would like to see that. Uh, kind of always rooting for the underdog, so to speak. 
Yeah, I'm not, if Grimm has a first down, I'm not saying that Alabama and Coastal Carolina are the same. But I'm saying if you go undefeated, there should be a reward of you getting a chance, especially in a playoff atmosphere, a playoff era. I totally agree. Don't you? Because you, you don't know what's going to happen from Saturday to Saturday. Injuries always play a part uh, in a season, so to speak. And you just you just don't Time know. Kansas. Uh, that one time out of the ten, half. maybe it's that weekend and that Three year. Second time out. Uh, but you can't just just discount it. It's what the NCAA basketball tournament is so special yeah. because of. That's why they, they get so many eyeballs during that time of the year. Speaking of tomorrow, next Saturday, more great Sun Belt conference action on ESPN Plus. Don't miss out. Make sure to sign up at ESPNPlus.com. Look, the Sun Belt has some great rivalries. Including, we've talked about Teddy Gallagher, 34 for Coastal Carolina. Yeah. There was a game postponed with Louisiana last year. Teddy Gallagher said that he would play Louisiana at 3 a.m. in a Wendy's parking lot. Yeah, That's got, how badly he wanted to play. Yeah, some great players from the Sun Belt: Denario Davis, E.Y. Hilton, Addison from Troy. Some great players in that league. This one is overthrown. It's a 27-point game, so this third and nine is uncomfortable for some folks, including possibly Stanford Steve somewhere getting the old tape rolling for SVP at some point this week, you think? Just saying. Some people are wanting to, wanting to see this field goal here. <laughs> That's see, that's just evil now. The touchdown they might be able to take. The field goal, uh-uh. Some, some remote's going through some other piece of furniture if that happens. On the rollout, Daniels. And it's fourth down coming up. If the special teams unit walks on the field, you get blamed for this, Heisman man. You. I don't, think Coach all Leibold, this heat. I don't think he's going to kick a field goal here, but it would be funny if, if that did happen. They hey. tried the field goal unit out. You would, we, we'd probably hear every remote control oh. across the country. It'd be a waterfall. Slamming flagging. against wall. <laughs> Everybody's saying we can lose on a touchdown. I, you know, can't take a field goal. That's tough. <laughs> if this doesn't end up on SVP, I don't know what's going on. Daniels under pressure, and down he goes. It's Stewart Guess again. Who? Josiah Stewart, who has become the sack man for Coastal Carolina. He's got three and a half tonight. Well, they needed an answer for Jackson, who left for the NFL. Enter Josiah Stewart, three and a half sacks in the ball game tonight. And he just gets right around. Campbell do the right tackle. Saw the Jayhawk waving farewell to the shot of clear. I believe they're from extended families. Being foul, each of them. Six sacks for Coastal Carolina. Three and a half by Stewart alone. How about that? He shared one. That's a ball game for him. I mean, they have a, another player that they can rely on when it comes to pass rush. Now Jarrett Guest, the third quarterback, used for Coastal Carolina. Big games tomorrow, Iowa State and Iowa in the afternoon. Washington and Michigan, Pitt and Tennessee, noontime. And that battle for the state of Iowa is going to be wild. It's usually a big game. They're both top ten. I, I don't know, Hickory Park after the game is going to be wild one way or the other. A heck of a game, that's for sure. Tuned into that one. And the final spread of 27 safely falls into the final column for Coastal Carolina. First Power Five school to visit Brooks Stadium goes down. The shot of clears go to two and O oh against Kansas. Very impressive stuff, Andre. It really was. I mean, the execution, both in the run game, pass game, the, the special teams stepped up. 
blocked the field goal, blocked the punt for a touchdown, and then the defense with how many sacks did you say? Six? Six sacks. Six sacks in the ball game. I mean, it was a complete team effort across the board in literally all three phases. Jamie Chadwell's with Kark. Coach, in the third quarter at one point, Kansas was been a touchdown. Where did they test you the most tonight? Well, I think, uh, you know, obviously they did some good stuff offensively. really put a put a uh, stress on our defense, and we didn't play well, didn't tackle their quarterback. He did a great job. He was fantastic. Uh, you know, and they made it, what was it, 28-22 uh, right there. Uh, but the thing that I was proud of, we scored 21 straight points to put it away. So uh, we didn't play our best in certain, in certain, at certain times, but when we needed to, we did. And so, uh, but they, we knew they would be better than what they were, and they fought. Uh, but I was proud that we could uh, put it away there in the end. Your quarterback, Grayson McCall, describe the pressure he puts on opposing defenses. Well, the thing that, or he's so good, obviously he can run and he can make all the throws, but he's so good in the pocket. And when you when you think you might have him, he can he can find that next guy, you know, and then the route. Some guys can look at one, maybe two, and they're done. He can go through the whole progression, and you got to cover the whole field. And if you, I don't know what our stats were, but he, I think a lot of people caught some balls tonight. Uh, and that's the thing with him is he can find some players, and we're glad he's ours. This was a scene tonight. This place was rocking, and you guys are rolling. So what do you have to do to keep this momentum? Well, you know, the, the, the awesome thing about it, we broke a record tonight, and, and two years ago, nobody thought this vision could happen. And so I'm going to enjoy it tonight because it, it's, it, this is what you want to play for. And what we've got to do is we got to play uh, football the way we're capable. We did a lot of good things, but we had some bad stuff that I don't like, that I'm not proud of. And we got to clean that up if we're going to win uh, in this as we continue to go forward. Thank you, Coach. Thank you very much. Hey. God bless all you 911. We remember you 20 years ago. We appreciate all your sacrifice and service. Jamie Chadwell and Paul Carcaterra. Coastal Carolina gets the win over Kansas 49-22. Your final from Conway for our entire wonderful crew on Friday nights. For Paul Carcaterra, for Andre Ware, I'm Jason Benetti. We thank you for watching, and we say farewell from Conway, South Carolina, with a record crowd watching Coastal Carolina win by 27. Good night. Don't let it happen. I didn't even.